forgot there was a prologue. Oh. Reading that? Yeah. Alright. We got the day four. <laughs> you really like that website, huh? I have needs. Love this place so much energy, so much love. Feel the optimism in the air, even after all the struggles, you still came to see me and got the experience. Yeah. Gotta. Like value guards, does she mean fan club or something? So that's what she meant by a tea like drink. Just a local page for fuck's sake. They're messing with forces they can't grasp. Could be worse, God forbid things get under control here. Here, a bit. Oh yeah, I think I already went through all these. Seems you made it just in time. I think that's just a car backfiring. Really, it sounded more like a gunshot to me. Have you ever heard gunshots? Haven't we all at some point? Yeah, well. See? Sounds more like a car's exhaust. I don't know, it's too dry. Yeah, but gunshots give more echo. What if it's a firecracker? Ah, boss. Firecrackers? Yep, a couple of years ago there was an incident where some dude killed a cop. He managed to slip away because his pistol was mi mixed up with the usual Mega Christmas firecrackers. Nah, it sounded too hollow for firecrackers. Well, whatever, this is not a morning talk show. I'm not paying you to chit-chat about meaningless things. At least not amongst yourselves. Right, we shouldn't lose time over a car's exhaust! 
Hey! Time to mix drinks and change lives. Welcome to Valhalla. Hello, Hello, I'm looking for some information. What kind of information? What can you tell me about a girl nicknamed Crimson Rose? It sounds like a tacky online handle. Although a tacky online handle is a bit redundant. Do you know anything about her? Nope, sorry. I have $80 here that might refresh your memory. Now that you remember her, mention it, I remember something. Really? Yeah, now I'm totally sure that I have no idea whatsoever who you're talking about. Nothing at all? Nothing. Man, you're a sucky bartender, not having any info I need. <sighs> well, first of all, why assume I just happen to have the info you conveniently need? Does that girl frequent this place? Is there any proof that I might have the info that you so desperately need? Well, I... And second, you're not going to get anywhere by offering me physical money. In fact, what are you doing with physical money? Do you want to get mugged so badly? Yeah, well... Moreover, even if I did know something, do you really think $80 is enough? <laughs> can do almost nothing with $80. It's not even enough to have a decent lunch. Why are you scolding me? Why did you call me a sucky bartender for not conveniently having the info you need? I... Wait, of course. You want all deals to be clean, so you need me to spend money on the bar. That's how it works, right? I spend money. You give me the info. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, then. Get me a drink, but keep it under $80. See what kind of drink you can buy with that. Uh, nothing. Let's do... Okay, so QWER, so... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2... All aged and mixed. Here. Okay, then. Do you know anything about the girl? Nope. But you said maybe, maybe not. Turns out that it's maybe not. <laughs> you, were no, you were the one deluding yourself into thinking I might know something. And like I said, $80 is nothing. So I need to spend more? I'll give you some intel. Spend all the money you want, but I know nothing and no amount will change that. Can I at least get my money back? Why? The order is right, isn't it? <sighs> I guess. So why are you looking for that girl, mister? Von D Vondelay. Art Vondelay. I'm a private detective. It's what I do. So I'll assume you're either looking for a missing girl or working for a creepy online stalker. You're assuming the girl I'm looking for is innocent or lost. She's not. She's half of the so-called reapers of the city. Two guns for hire that work for whoever is resourceful enough to find them and wealthy enough to pay them. Crimson Rose and Cobalt Lily, they call themselves. They still sound more like teenagers' internet nicknames. So, who wanted you to track her? I don't know. I got the letter with the instructions and a paycheck. What if it's a prank? I have the money, so what do I care if it is? Besides, considering the amount I was able to cash in with that check, I'd be a pretty wasteful prank. Let's see. Still, any information or rumors you can give me? They don't have to be related to the girl. Why do you need them? It's always good to keep up with the local goings-on. Well, let's see... Hmm... Sorry, I can't think of anything right now. Most of the conversations you hear in here aren't rumor-worthy. Humor-worthy, maybe, but not much about current events. At least, not beyond what you see on the news. Damn it! what kind of bar is this if you can't gather the word on the street? What kind of film noir world do you think I live in? Gil, Gil might know something if you're so fixated on finding some kind of information. I don't know what you're talking about. Do you know something that might help me, Gil? I don't. I certainly don't, and I'm not. And I'm offended by the suggestion that I do. He knows something. On second thought, maybe it's better if you don't get involved with him. Well, this has been a major waste of time. And here I thought all the noise BTC bars have made lately m would be useful for something. Noise? What noise? You don't know? I'm asking for a reason. You'll find out soon enough, don't worry. In any case, I guess I'll have another drink and leave. What can I get you? 
I have a grizzly temple. Simple enough. Six, nine, and okay, so if we double it, it should be twenty. So one, two, three, four, five, six. 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 One, two. All blended. Here. Okay, then this is going to be deducted from the eighty dollars from earlier, right? No. Fine. Come on, there has to be something. This week has been slow as hell. The only good thing I've heard is about this girl who threw herself off the roof of the nearby mall. The whole thing about a woman catching her midair makes me think it's totally made up. Aside from rumors that har the Harbingers are looking to cause trouble at a bank today, no, not really. Damn it. Wait, who told you that? Appeared on the news, didn't it? Yeah, but the name the Harbingers wasn't used. No Glitch City outlet has reported themselves. There are rumors that someone or something is keeping them silent. And even the international outlets aren't using the name Harbingers. They're avoiding acknowledging the organization yet for some reason. So you're either one of them or somebody in the know told you about it. Wow, he can be surprisingly sharp. Yeah, Donovan D. Dawson was in here for the last three days, actually. Really? wonder if he'll notice the glass the Id that idol sign. I mean, sure, I can't think of anything that would be useful involving him right now, but... Guess not. Did he talk about anything interesting? Interviewing the idol that had a show a couple days ago, dealing with messy interns. Par for the course, I guess. I see, I see, that's... Gunshot! It's a backfire. Firecrackers! <laughs> hey, what do you think that sound just now was? It sounded like something very heavy being dropped. Something heavy? Come on, that's not even close. It's definitely more like an explosion of some kind. No, you can clearly hear the clashing metal. Something that was both made out of metal and something very heavy fell down. That's what made the sound. Whatever it is, it's not normal for it to be re repeating so often. I wonder if something's happening. I th heard there were some gang spats going on. Maybe they took the conflict here. Which means gunshots! If that's the case, I just hope they don't come too near us. Well, I've got to go. Seems, some seems coming here wasn't a waste of time after all. Really? Really. I just have different needs. But there will come a time where this when this place might help me. Goodbye. Please come again. Gangs, then. Unlikely. This is unicorn territory. They've always been a neutral and important third party in other gangs' deals. The who what now? I'll just pretend I heard nothing. Thank you. Oh, he, kill. <laughs> yeah. he knows a lot more than he's letting on. He left me thinking about the whole noise from the BTC bars thing. What's up with that? I think I heard something about money laundering through bars. Don't take my word for it, though. I see. Guess I'll find out soon enough. Welcome. I think that's enough. <laughs> well, you want some more? <laughs> I'm Streaming Chan, giving you a live video feed of my life and adventures 24-7. Bathroom time and naughty moments only available to premium users. Before OnlyFans. It's only $99 a month. $99.99 a month. Go premium now. Um... It's Friday night, and you all know what that means. It's time for Streaming Chan's Escapades. Today's escapade is brought to you by ShiningFinger.mo. Leaders of VR adult entertainment since 2069. Buy a year of premium membership, and you'll get a code. Change the code for a free trial of a VR experience bottled after yours truly. Excuse me. Today I picked the shoddiest, nastiest, smelliest, ugliest bar I could find downtown. Sadly, it actually looks like a half-decent half decent inside. So much for going to a crap old bar that smells like dog urine. <laughs> Excuse me. But no matter, tonight I'll give you an escapade you'll never forget. Hey, hey you, where's the bartender? You're talking to her. Very funny, where is he, really? Right in front of you. Hey you, the pretty boy over there, where's the bartender? You're looking at him. No way! No hot shirtless guy playing with fire and serving drinks while flirting with you? No sexy scantily clad girls jiggling around all the place? You're telling me you two <coughs> dress like fucking waiters are the bartenders here? Yup. Seems that way. Is that a problem? Of 
course it's a problem. Friday night, uh, Friday nights are peak viewing hours. I need something sexier and enticing to keep them interested. Oh well, there's an easy solution to that. There is? Yeah, just take your top off. Thanks. You might need to take off your bra too, depending on how the traffic goes. Wait, you're quite flat. Do you even use a bra? Is that piercing glare a no? Come on, one of us is gonna have to take their top off and it ain't gonna be me. I already did that once today. Ah, and it's too late to go somewhere else. By the time I find an even nastier bar, they'll be closed. What's your policy on wearing pants? Somebody tried to have me fired for wearing a skirt, so we deal with that on a case-by-case -case basis. Not a concrete answer. I need binary yes-no answers. My viewers have the attention span of fruit flies. They want to use their brains. Do you think they'd watch some think they'd watch something like this? If you I need to keep them entertained, and the fact that you still have your shirt on isn't helping. Wait, I know. Give me a drink. A big one, the nastiest one you can think of. Um, hello, service here, please. Wow, it's like my brain shut down. Sure. Nasty drink. Manly promo. See, one, two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen. Okay, so it's it's big. So that's one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, five, one, two, three. All on the rocks and mixed. Here. All right then. Cheers. I don't think you should chug it down so quickly. It's like it hit me, but it didn't. I didn't feel it until a few seconds later. Is that what being kicked in the balls feels like? Yup. Okay, I've decided. I'll just get really wasted. <laughs> oh, good decisions. That's gotta be fun enough, right? Is that mine? Yes. Oh. If you say so. Okay, in the meantime, what can you tell me about this bar? What do you mean? Weird stories, fun stuff, interesting facts. You're being seen by an average of 6,000 people. Make their time worth it. Let's see then. Last weekend, we held a party for the Safe Air Toy Company. And? It's a company run completely by dogs. Really? The place was completely overrun by corgis. Wait, wait, wait. Corgis? Did you really serve drinks to corgis? Tuxedo-clad talking corgis, yeah. Wow, awesome! Wait, you're not shitting me, right? I wish I was shitting you, trust me. What else, what else? Um, let's see... Donovan D. Dawson from the Augmented and I was here for three nights in a row. That perfume chauvinistic bastard? Huh, there's that word again. Just the other day, someone from the Augmented Eye interviewed me, actually. What did they ask? Oh, the usual bullshit, who I was, what I did, future plans, inspirations. The one that interviewed me was a small, meek girl with glasses. We know her. <laughs> she seemed a bit bitter, though, I wonder why. But enough about that. Wait, can I see that glass over there? Hmm? Sure. This signature, is this Kira Mickey's autograph? Yeah, she came here before her last concert. Get out, really? Is this some kind of secret hidden bar of the stars or something? Not really, we're just in the right place at the right time. What kind of person is she when she's not on stage? I've tried to get a meeting with her, but she actually seemed will and she actually seemed willing, but she's always busy. Very nice girl, actually. She seems to be completely invested in her work. She loves what she does, and it shows. You'd think she'd be some sort of diva, but as far as I'm concerned, she's one of the nicest people I've met. I knew it! I knew she was nice! Her passion shows in her concerts, you know? She's so spontaneous. Her performances are never the same. Every time she sings Shine Spark, I feel like my soul is warming up like a high-performance computer. Shine Spark! I find myself singing in the shower all the time. And those who pay premium can hear me sing every day at $99.99 a month. Get, go premium now. That aside, I was about to call bullshit on what you said. But I guess you do have some sort of proof for everything. Can I keep this glass? No. Pretty please? No. Party pooper. At least this bar might be more interesting than I initially thought. 
The one thing that would make it perfect is if Pretty Boy over there had a pass with the KGB. Boots up! Yeah, that'd be crazy, right? Uh. Are you gonna order anything else? What? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole thing, the whole getting wasted thing. I heard of a drink that did something. Give me a big one of those, please. A big bad touch. <sighs> Coming right up. <laughs> Giving her a <laughs> bad, bad touch. Okay. So that's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All on the rocks and mixed. Big bad touch. Here. I was expecting something dirtier. We have olive brine. I can pour it, pour in a bit if that's what you want. No, not that. Such a dirty name, it feels like the drink ought to come in a phallic glass or be this thick white liquid. That would have skyrocketed the watcher, watchers at least threefold. Don't you have anything like that? Nope. I guess I'll make do with the condensed milk when I get home. I don't want to think about that. Friendly reminder that today's escapade is brought to you by ShiningFinger.mo. Leaders of VR adult entertainment since 2069. Buy your premium membership for a neat code. Said code will net you a free trial of a VR experience with a model based on moi. What's the deal with that VR experience? Well, a fan made an NND model of me. When Shining Finger asked me about a model for a partnership, I just contacted him. He got money for polishing the model a lot more. I got my partnership. We all won. I even got him a year of free premium membership in a VR set. That's nice. Wait, what's NND? Don't tell me you haven't heard of Niku Niku Dance. I asked for a reason. It's, well, it's music videos with 3D models. Yeah, that sounds like a good enough explanation. I see. To be honest, though, the model is a bit meatier than me. Not that I mind it, though, considering the use it gets. <clears throat> I was expecting you to be more scared when I said that you're being watched by a lot of people. It's hard to be scared when you can't see these people. But they're still there, you know? Sure, they're behind screens and sometimes in the opposite corner of the world. But every single one of them, one of the viewers is a real person with a real life. Not being here doesn't make them any less real. I understand, but it's just not the same. They're not here, visibly paying attention to me. I don't get paranoid because of my phone contacts. That's true, I guess. So, tell me, what made a lady like you become a bartender? It's not exactly an exciting story. Does it involve a man? No. What about a crime? Nope. Childhood promise? Nah. A religious vow? A what? A what? You're not gonna tell me that you just decided out of the blue to quit your job and start bartending. That's actually what happened, sorta. Well, come on, no epiphany, quarter life crisis, not even a hot teacher somewhere along the line? <clears throat> Life isn't always what a young adult novel where every decision. Always a young adult novel where every decision is a road cone. And that's a problem. One third of my audience are teens that shouldn't be allowed to watch my streams. <laughs> Throw me a bone here. There must be a nice mystical story you can tell me about yourself, Miss Bartender. Well, yes. Sometime after I started working, I got an interesting client. He was a DRKSOL, or S0L, a really old Lilla model. Apparently his power supply was running low. His charger was destroyed and he didn't have the money to buy upgrades or replacements. He also seemed to have neglected his maintenance. It was from the time when Collective Source wasn't a cloud storage system. He wouldn't be uploaded there once his body ran out of energy. Going. It was weird, you know. He was the only Lilum I've seen with a clear-cut fear of mortality. No transcendence for him. He would disappear once his batteries ran out. It's like knowing you'll vanish when everyone else passes on to heaven, he said. Oh, man. Guess he felt bad about burdening someone else with his problems. So he went and gave me a fingertip of his that f that fell we while we were talking. Before he left, he said, If you remember me, maybe a part of me will transcend. Um. Bravo! Bravo! Touching, full of feeling, completely awesome. I pay to see a movie like that. So what happened to that finger? I made a pendant out of it. I carry it with, carry it with me at all times. Even while bathing? Almost all times. Now that I think about it, how do you handle the stream if you want to watch a movie or something? 
I have a plugin that lays mosaic censorship over whatever I watch on TV or in the theater. Let's see. Okay, this is getting stale. I'm gonna heat this up. Heat this up. This. Heat this up. This even if I have to do it myself. We need to drop a cow in here, Miss Bartender. Get me drunk. I don't care how. Just do it. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Oh. For a fringe weaver. Yeah. It's one thing and then nine of the alcohol. Oh, jeez. So that is one, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. All aged and mixed. This will usually fuck you up. So. <laughs> Lightheadedness. Clumsy tongue. Palm sweaty, knees weak, arm spaghetti. Hey, at least you know Eminem. Can't feel my legs. Can't feel my legs! <laughs> Alright, let's get down. Get it on with the lewd stuff. First, I'll try to guess your bus size. I must warn you, I have a 90% success rate with this. Hmm, I'd say... B! Not big enough to fill a hand, but not small enough to make you look like a child. You're a size B, right? I'm not discussing my bus. Jeez. Don't be like that. I can tell you're a B cup. Your attitude makes me think you're an S, but your behavior makes me think your blood is AB. So, how many did I get? It right. Who knows? Ah, please let me get on with this. I need you to cooperate if this is going to be a success. Can I ask something? Finally! What's the point of getting drunk if you're going to behave the same way? <laughs> I guess it is the right. It is kind of redundant. Because you see, I'm drunk 24 7. Huh? Knowing people want to watch me do anything and everything. Seeing the viewer count steadily raises, I take more risks and become more adventurous. It's a feeling that, that neither alcohol nor sex can compare to. Speaking of sex, if I get lucky tonight, you only need to pay $99.99 to see what happens afterwards. Go premium or go home. Um, do you really get lucky if other person knows they're being streamed? You'd be surprised by how many are actually turned on by that. How do you deal with people who don't want their identities revealed? Everything's written here. By being captured by this camera, you hereby provide consent to the use of your face on all material produced by Streaming Chan LLC. Not sure how legal that is. People believe it is, and I've yet to be troubled by a lawyer. It's funny, though, when you're on the streets, unless it's somebody really hot, you can't recall their faces. But learn their name, and suddenly they're a fucking snowflake that's better than all the rest. Oh, this is weird. I'm feeling sleepy. You did ask me to get you drunk. Why is it weird? Because I haven't felt sleepy in quite some time. In fact, I've been sleep deprived for a while now. How long? A week. A week? Weeks are the ones with 30 days, right? Um, yep, totally sleepy. I can feel my eyes getting heavier. And we're, we're, there's this weird lag when I try to move. What's up with that? Anyways, I think I'll take a little nap here before storming off and continuing the night. If you'll excuse me. Should I call a cab? And risk waking her up? Leave her be. I'd rather break the rules and let her sleep than deal with her again. I'm gonna take my break now. It's been a while since I've needed a cigarette this badly. Alright. That was a thing. That was a thing. Now safe to keep playing. Ah, the lovely sensation of feeling like you're forgetting something. I'm gonna jump. Oh, whoops, no. No, wait a minute. <sighs> well done. Feeling better? Fresh air does wonders for you. Well, for a given value of fresh, anyway. I insist that it sounds like dynamite. No, it was too long to be dynamite. It sounded more like some heavy-duty tool. You're a heavy-duty tool. Yes, I am. Wait, that... Damn it! Oh, welcome back. 
could have sworn this place looked a lot more pink the last time we came. Maybe it's the lighting. Hey, bartender, what did that noise just now sound like to you? I say it sounds like construction, but Betty here says it's dynamite or something like that. Not you, too. Eh? Do you think it's dynamite, then? No, I say it's a backfire. It's a gunshot. Firecrackers! See? Those sounds have been going on all night, and we can't figure out what they are. Well, we aren't here to discuss that. We're here to... Um, who is he? Jillian, nice to meet you. I don't know. You have more of a John face. Oh, jeez. Where was he last weekend? I don't know, and I don't care. He already made amends for leaving me to fend off all those dogs. Anyway, what do you want? Beer. Ooh, what the hell? I'll have a beer, too. Two beers coming up. I have to remember our beers. Alright, so one... Oops, sorry. Two. Two, three, four. One, two... Four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All next. One, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. Here. Thanks, but this might be too much. I'll take care of anything you don't drink, don't worry. Tell me, bartender. Just call me Joe. Joe, that's a nice name. How's business lately? As usual. Wait, I guess you don't really know what usual means for us. We're not the kind to be filled to the brim during rush hours, and we don't have that many regulars. So it's just the same. Nothing's changed. I guess when we came here with all the dogs, it was quite the change of pace, huh? You have no idea. Um, I have a question, Jill. Is it about the girl sleeping next to you? Uh, premium. Please don't wake her up. Do you regularly regularly let people sleep here? No, but I'd rather have her sleeping than talking. Should you be saying that with at least 6,000 people listening? Let them hear. I don't care. 6,000 people? She calls herself Streaming Chan. She's been streaming her life 24-7. Sounds familiar. I think one of the dogs talked about seeing someone do that. I don't know if it's the same person. So, 6,000 people are watching and hearing us? Considering the way she's sleeping, they're probably only hearing us. Her camera is against the table. I don't know how many are still in the channel, though. I see. So, there will be a lot more witnesses if something's said? Do you, any of you have a criminal past? Nope. Just a minor charge of petty vandalism. What'd you do? Painted graffiti outside of my high school saying, Miss Thompson's a cunt? <laughs> Why'd you do that? Because Miss Thompson was a cunt! She constantly humiliated whoever got her questions wrong. She also constantly bullied two of my classmates. True, I got a week of suspension and had to clean the wall. But it gave everyone the courage to speak up. So how's stuff up at Doglandia? Well, we recently struck a deal with Farmer Fabrics to start a doggy clothing line. Farmer Fabrics? That name rings a bell. It's a textile company where the owner believes herself to be an alpaca. Yeah, that one. We had her here some time ago. She got drunk and... So much saliva everywhere. Oh. Well, she was spitting on everybody. Because she thought she was an alpaca. Oh, Jesus. But, anyway, dog clothes? We hired a new employee and she showed the higher up some designs. After a couple of talks, they decided to give the clothing production a try. Those designs were embarrassing, you know? But something tells me that that's why they were approved. You guys want anything else? I'm still handling this beer, so I'm fine. You're such a wuss. I'll have a Zen Star, please. Oh shit, I changed this. Damn it. What? Sure. No. Crap. I screwed up a little bit. Take the Zen Star, and then I'm gonna have to load. Fast forward to this. 
So we're making two normal beers instead of two big beers. We gotta follow the directions. Oh. But I think he's mentioned something about being it, it being too, too much. Too big, yeah. One, two, one, one, two, one, two, three, four. One, one, two, one, one, two, one, two, three, four. There you go. Thank you. Man, afterwork beer is always the best beer. Yeah. So tell me, bartender. Just call me Jill. Jill, that's a nice name. How's business lately? As usual. Wait, I guess you don't really know what usual means for us. Um, we're not the kind to be filled to the brim during rush hours. We don't have that many regulars. So it's just the same. Nothing's changed. I guess when we came here with all the dogs, it was quite a change of pace, huh? You have no idea. Um, I have a question, Jill. Is it about the girl sleeping next to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking. 6,000 people. <sighs> we have a criminal past. Orlandia. Saliva, dog clothes. We're getting there. Two Brantinis, there we go. Now we're on track. Cool. Probably make more money doing it this way. Brantini. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. One, all aged mixed. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, one. Here you go. You have such a wimpy taste in drinks, Deal. By the way, that's Betty, that's Deal. <laughs> not all of us have spent their weekends in college partying like maniacs. Actually, not all of us went to college. You missed nothing. Sometimes I wish I could go back in time and kick myself. Hmm. Something on your mind? A girl that's designing the clothes. Excuse me. Laura, what about her? She's cute, but she should take more care in her appearance. I mean, right now she fits the unkempt cutie category so well, so well that it's almost painful. It's so cliche that I can't help but cringe when looking at her. Cringe? It's like when you see something that's such a cheesy movie cliche, you just feel the need to kick whatever the hell it is. Kick? Jeez. But I didn't think I'd have to say this to you twice in the same month, but you shouldn't kick people. I wasn't going to kick her. Why'd you think I'd kick her? Because I've seen you kick people before. <laughs> Apparently unprovoked or due to complicated reasons only you understand. Fine. Guilty as charged. Still, I'm going to do something about her. I feel like I just need to. It's a matter of honor. Honor, she says. Well, maybe honor isn't the right word. But she has potential, and I'm not going to let her waste it. Jill, I'm going to go check the antenna, antenna on the roof. All right. She's your boss, right? Didn't you meet her before? Nope, I'm just the veterinarian. The dogs were the ones that organized a meeting with her. I'd say she's really good looking. But honestly, those pants rob her, rob her of her charm. What do you mean? Make her look too uptight. And at a glance, she doesn't seem like the type. Some shorts or a skirt would fit her better. Hmm. Well, she wears a skirt or pants depending on her mood. There's also this one time where she came in wearing a kilt. That kilt was awesome! Damn, she has nice hearing. Now that I think about it, you have that hobby of speculating that someone's personality is like based on their look, just on their looks. I mean, you did the same with Jill here. Amazing, you actually made made that sound weird as hell. Yes, I have the habit of trying to guess someone's behavior based on their looks. No, it's not a hobby. You made that sound like I'm some sort of creep. I, I did. What'd you think about me? Nothing much, really. Mostly that you were too polite. Not a natural polite, though. More like a professional polite. You're like that because you need to be. That was it, really. Although the way you looked at me when I said your boss could use a skirt or shorts was interesting. <laughs> you seemed interested in what I said. Like you'd like to see that scenario. You're thinking too much. What do you think about Gil, then? Hmm. Hmm. He's either a total simpleton or acts like one in a way that consumes the rest of his character. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I'm just a veterinarian. My judgment might be clouded by seeing so many furry businessmen. 
Let's have another round. Sounds like a good idea. I'll have... You'll have something strong. You need to pump some testosterone into your taste of drinks. You'll thank me later. Trust me. Then, two strong drinks. Manly drinks. I don't care which ones. Well, you shut up. Two strong drinks. Manly drinks. <laughs> Let's do Mars Blasts. One, two, three, four, five, six. One. One, two, three, four. One, two. All blended. One of these is enough to leave your face red like the actual planet. Six, one, one, two, three, four, one, two. I didn't know you could use a keyboard <laughs> oh. before I started playing it this time because I used to literally drag the stuff to. Oh. It took so long. Here. Now drink. Ugh. Oh, man up. You'll get used to it. Hey, Joe, has ever, any, someone ever proposed to you as a prank? <laughs> You know, make you think that they're falling in love with you just to reveal that it was all a prank? Oh, that's a dick move. No. Jill? Oh, shit. First year of high school, the guy I had my eyes on for a whole year had asked me out. Saturday morning, I go to the meeting place. What do I find? It was all a prank by some bitches. Ouch. Sorry, I... The worst part isn't that they set me up, but rather that I saw it coming. I knew that guy wouldn't find me attractive enough to ask me out. I knew those bitches would target me sooner or later just for kicks. I knew it all, so when it all happened, I felt nothing. They confirmed my suspicions that teenagers are a plague that must be eradicated. <laughs> anyway, why the question? Hey, piece of scrap. Yeah? These are the situations where you should have stopped me before I said anything. It's better to learn by tripping yourself. Why the question, though? Um... I was asking because one of my ex's cousins has been hanging on me the past couple of days. If it were somebody else, I'd pretend to be straight with the help of this piece of scrap here. Sadly, she knows who I am. Worst part is, knowing Vero, she'd probably put her cousin up to it as a practical joke. Well, I'd suggest telling the cousin that she should cut it out. If she feels genuinely offended, they might, might not have been in cahoots. But I'm just spouting nonsense based on what you've told me. Don't pay too much attention. It's better than my suggestion. What was yours? Waterboarding. <laughs> <laughs> see what I love this game? <laughs> I see what? <laughs> the fact that she knows how to waterboard somebody is what scares me most. True. The Girl Scouts also taught me how to skin a deer, and I see nobody making a fuss about that. But yeah, your advice sounds good enough. Especially when you factor that if Gina's being honest about her, she probably won't feel offended. Gina, which one was that again? Blonde, flat as a cutting board, but cute as a button. Oh yeah, she came to the office Christmas party, right? That's the one. Well, it's getting late. We should be going. Yeah. Thank you again for everything, Jill. Bye. Please come again. Back. Those damn cats moving the internet antenna. Oh yeah, Gil, some guy said I should tell you that the bunny's late, whatever that means. Oh shit. Boss, I'm leaving early. If I don't come back in two days, consider me as good as dead. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Shouldn't we be worried? Think of him, him as a kid that tells outrageous stories to get attention and everything will be easier. Besides, he knows how to take care of himself. Yeah. He'll be here on Monday like nothing ever happened. In any case, I'll be back in my office. Maybe now I can finish watching that didgeridoo tutorial. Hello, Jill. Ah, Stella. Here for another drink today? Not really. I was just one around the neighborhood in. Right. Anyway, I found this bottle being neglected at my house and thought someone who likes old liquor as much as you would appreciate it. Really? I don't know what to say. Thanks. Well, it's nothing, really. This just in. Hmm? The Apollo Trust Bank has locked its doors, leaving about 30 people trapped inside. The security system was activated after somebody tried to steal the information from the main database. Early this morning, the bank... Oh, gods! Say! Wonder if she'll be all right. Oh, hello, Jamie. Good evening, Jill. Did you see the news about the Apollo Trust Bank? Newsflash just ended. Sounds like things got ugly. From what I heard, there was a commotion earlier today. Something about people being unable to leave the building. Let's hope for the best. Yeah. Gil stormed off just a minute ago, though. 
I see. I guess the bunny was late. <laughs> it definitely knows what's going on. <sighs> what can I get you? Give me a Mars Blast. Coming right up. I'm just gonna follow the directions. Mars Blast. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, one, two. All blended. Oh. Serve. One Mars Blast. Yeah, this is the one. Mars Blasts have always seemed poorly named to me. Shouldn't it be red instead of yellowish? Then again, the whole Red Planet thing is still its nickname. VR. Can't wait to leave on myself. Hey, who's this girl? She calls herself Streaming Chain. She's been streaming her life 24-7. I'm guessing your equipment's still running, so you might want to watch what you say. Thanks for the advice. I'm changing the subject a bit. Have you been hearing explosions or something throughout the day? I heard that a supersonic drone was undergoing tests and it lost its course. That might be it. Ah. Uh... Hey, boss, the explosions were caused by supersonic drones. That sounds better than firecrackers. I'm trying to figure out what that what they were doing all day. Ah, I see. Sonic booms are not sounds people can normally identify. This one drone made a lot of noise when breaking the sound barrier. Is this an area to test that kind of stuff? It's not, which makes the whole thing quite suspicious. Huh. Man, if only Gil was here to here to hear that info. He thought they were gunshots. Are you worried about him? Sort of. He always leaves without notice for days, but he always comes back unscathed. I'd be lying if I said I'm not worried, but at the same time, I just kind of kind of become used to it. He can become a tr he can be a troublesome man, huh? Sometimes. Say, do you think the people in the bank will be all right? This isn't the first time a bank is closed like that, but something is off about this. Off? How? I don't admit, I don't know. Maybe it's the hour. Maybe it's the fact that the news is making an unusually big stink of it. Let's hope I'm just overthinking it. Yeah. Are you worried about something? The girl that was in here yesterday said she was going to that bank. It's not like me to be personally invested in what happens to clients, but never mind. Do you want something else? Yeah, I can make time for one more drink. Fetch me a beer. Let's keep it simple. Sure. One, two, one, two, three, four. All mixed. Here. I once read that beer played an important part in humanity's history. Yeah, I'm familiar with the theory. It's an interesting one. The gist of it is that brewing was an important part of society during its development. Drinks were ubiquitous while feasting. They helped to foster bonds and build faction alliances. Give enough time and enough beer, large societies would be born. Do you know a lot about this? Nah, just enough. Jill, have you ever thought about brain uploading? Brain uploading? I was thinking, what's the point of uploading yourself if you're still here? Let's say you upload yourself, and effectively that that's new someone's in cyber that knew someone's in cyberspace. You will still be here. Wouldn't it be weird to know that there's a you that's not you somewhere? That's an interesting point. I guess it'd be the same as cloning, huh? Imagine if your cyberspace self found out about the real you somehow. Hell, imagine talking to your other self. There's more. Imagine placing multiple copies of you in different situations. Exposing each one to different scenarios to see how they develop. Guess it is kind of heartbreaking in a way. Imagine someone with some illness uploading their brain into the ether. Only to find out that they're... Uh, find out their physical bodies are still alive and here, instead of living in a place where there is no disease. Remember an article from a while back about the earliest forms of brain uploading. It scanned the brain in such a thorough and intense manner that it would effectively kill the person. Jeez. It used the words, burn the brain. Ouch. All for nothing because the data would be corrupted or broken. They halted all brain uploading research after that. I think they started another project about living brains in jars or something after that. A subject interests you, huh? It makes for a nice time sink when I'm doing nothing. Well then, nice talking to you, Jill. Same here. Always a pleasure. Say hello to Gillian when, for me when he gets back. Come back. Please come again. Phew. Hold on. You want to stay here? Seems the street's quite restless. Thanks, but I'll pass. I have a couple of matters to attend to at home. You do? Yeah, I ordered a nano camo module for my apartment. It should be installed by now. Nano camo? Is that the tad expensive? Yep, to be honest, I asked my mom for it. She'd been pestering me for about a 
what about what gift I wanted for Mega Christmas for a while. Mega Christmas? Yep. She's been asking that for four years now, and I've always said it was I was fine. So I took the chance and asked for her for it. Used up all the Pat's gifts. Oh. Feels a bit weird to ask your parents for a gift like that when you're 27. I'm sure she doesn't mind. So what will the nano, nano camel module change from your apartment? I got the basic plan. Walls and one piece of cloth. So I picked my Kotatsu then, too. You have a Kotatsu? You know what a Kotatsu is, boss? I'm more impressed that you know it is. I mean, futons are common knowledge, but a Kotatsu, not so much. If I remember correctly, Kotatsu is a... Uh, we'll see. Yeah, no, 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 okay. So, in Japan, what you have is you have this thing. It's a kind of like a table. All out. I know. <laughs> It'll fit in. I mess it up? I don't think so. Ah. Great. You're fine. It, it, I can't believe I'm doing this while I'm drinking. There we go. What I was trying to do was make sure... So Kotatsu is a thing where basically you have a small table. Like, mm -hmm. I think you were sitting... Like the coffee table we have over there. Uh-huh. Imagine if you had a heater that sat underneath that. Mm. The entire thing was covered with a blanket. So you stick your legs underneath it and it warms up your legs. Oh. That's what a kotatsu is, I think. Yeah, well, days get cold and the heater might not, not be well enough. And the Japanese have mastered how to live comfortably in reduced spaces. You should invite me sometime. I want to see how you decorate the place with that. Let's plan a day to grab a beer, yeah. No more dancing. I'm tired. What do we do with her? I'll take care of everything. Don't worry. All right, sorry for leaving her like this. No problem. Well, I gotta go. See you tomorrow, boss. Careful out there. Cool. Jill wants to buy a fa wants to buy a fan, even though it's winter. Buying one will prevent her from getting too distracted. You can now use nano camera to drip. Customize your room. What's a nano camel? See, see the thing she's sitting under. Uh -huh. There's a heater that sits underneath the top, mm. so it warms your legs and stuff. It's cool. Yeah. All right. So she wants a Joker Cylon. Cyclone. There it is. Eight hundred bucks. Jill bought what she wanted. She's really pleased with herself. She will really surely focus her work. I am going to cheat my ass off. <laughs> the nano camera to customize your room. Nano camo app. Incredible augmented eye. Customize. Oh. Oh, okay, so if I have to pay to change it. Got it. Nope, not happening. Not right now. Okay. Go to work. Probably should have saved, but whatever. Can you save? Huh? Well, I could... No, I can't save until I get to a break. Oh. You don't need to go to the restaurant or anything, do you? Okay. Right. You listening, though. Evening. Huh? I didn't expect you today. I was waiting for you to call and say you wouldn't be coming or something. Things at the Apollo Bank are getting ugly, so that means more people will be looking for a drink. <sighs> you can take a break, you know. You're quite the hard worker. And the streets are not exactly safe right now. They've never been when you get down to it. And besides, I can't afford to not come come with the bar closing soon. wonder if any bar has used impending closure as a means of getting their employees to work. Seems like the total opposite would happen. 
to mention I get bored out of my brains in my apartment, so I'd rather come here anyway. What'd you say? Nothing important. Gil isn't back yet, is he? No, I wouldn't worry too much about him, though. If you say so. That girl's still here? <coughs> yep, she was sleeping so peacefully, I felt bad about waking her up. She doesn't wake up for a while. So, would you mind doing that for me? Actually, yes, I mind. But you're the boss, and it's kind of my fault she's here in the first place. Sorry about that. Hey, young lady, sleep another hour, we'll have to start charging you a motel fee. Uh... Uh, where am I? Oh, right, yawn. Know, the shoddy downtown bar. Let's see, all my gear is in place. And neither my pants nor my... <coughs> Penny shirt or bra have been displaced. Oh, it's the flat bartender. Good morning. Good evening. Evening? Oh, well, it's the best night or day of sleep I've had in quite some time. Sorry for all the trouble I may have caused you today or last night. Don't worry. You're so nice, flat bartender. Thanks for taking care of me. Bye! Hello, guys and gals. Streaming Chance back in action with her batteries reloaded. Ah, the moon, it burns! I feel like I've just unleashed something terrible into the world. Oh, Lord. Come on, it's not that bad. Say, what's this bottle? Client gave it to me yesterday. A gift of sorts, I'm guessing. Oh, cool. Some sort of rum. Rum? Nice! Want me to serve you a bit of it? Hmm, yeah, sure. The boss some run. Grandpa booze. Serve. Here. Alright. I'm gonna enjoy this in my office. Thanks. Anytime. Okay then. Time to serve, mix, and change lives. Wait, that's not how it goes. <sighs> no one here to retort. Man, it feels lonely without Gil here. Just hope the restlessness in the streets doesn't lead to dangerous or weird types coming in. Good evening. Holy shit, that was a record-breaking jinx! Uh, welcome to Valhalla. What can I get you? I'll have a blue fairy. Don't make a joke about becoming real. Don't make a joke about becoming real. On it! Give this um, brain a blue fairy. I'm not gonna make it big. I'm not gonna make it big. I'm not gonna make it big. Sure. Aged and mixed. Here you go. Nice, yeah, this is the thing. So, um, how are you gonna... Oh, you can grab stuff. Should have figured as much. You can drink stuff? And eat. I have the same system Lilum do. Can I ask you something, or miss... Call me Taylor. Just Taylor. And yes, Kitty, like you can ask me anything. Yep. Okay, Taylor. You have to be the first person I've met that didn't go, Okay, just Taylor. Not too easy. You're a brain in a jar, right? I'm sure not a hologram of that, I'm sure. Yep, I'm a bonafide human brain in a jar. So, how... why? What, does my handsomeness make you speechless? You're not something a girl sees every day, and that's saying quite a bit in these parts. Fear not, for I have speech prepared for these situations. <laughs> a speech? Because of course you do. You're seeing one of the five great living bottled brains of the world. We are brains living in conditions that allow us to exist as any other humanoid creature. All while computers in our jars scan our activities. In a slow but steady manner, we are helping the world understand the inner workings of nature's most complex computer. Guessing you prepared that after being asked the same question too many times, huh? No, no, no exasperation or anything like that, mind you. I just wanted to have something thoughtful prepared. Look, I even have a couple of pamphlets with me. You want one? Sure. What brings one of our world's five brains in a jar into this place, though? Oh, I'm from around here, actually. 
I just wanted to take a walk for the first time in quite a bit of time. Have you come here before? Sadly, no. Otherwise, I'd remember a cute face like yours. Speaking of which, can I have your name? Um, it's Jill. Jill? That's a really cute name. Thank you. Say, weren't you scared of going outside today? What with the commotion around and all? Didn't stop you from coming here either, did it? Yeah, you're right. It's gonna take more than cryptic but ominous news to stop me. You're awfully energetic, did you know that? Sorry, does that bother you? No, not at all. Just that I figured a brain in a jar wouldn't be so happy. While I was alive, my body got to a point where I, there wasn't much I could do. State of new state of existence allows me to accomplish more than I ever could before. Plus, I'm doing something that'll help people in the long run. Wouldn't you be happy? Wonder. Do you want to make me happy, Jill? Depends on what it takes. Don't worry, just give me a beer. All right, then I'll make you happy. One, two. Beer, beer. Ah, yes. No matter what happens, beer is always good. It's interesting, though. Just yesterday, I was talking to a client about brain uploads. You were? Yeah, we were talking about how even if you upload your brain, you'd still be here. I thought about that, too. Do you think that you in the cybernetic environment would feel like she was indeed transferred? <sighs> like, would she remember everything? Like waking up someplace else and so on? That's an interesting question. I was actually thinking earlier about being able to transfer someone's brain into a lily. One of the brains is being is being used in such an experiment, actually. They can make a functional lily. Unfortunately, the wiring and other stuff makes it more look more creepy than anything. They aren't transferring his identity or anything, just wiring him to a body. Oh. I think someone would rather do that than float around exposed in a jar. I have to admit the whole brain thing does look creepy. But the body I'm telling you about is just uncanny looking. Speaking of uncanny, how did you feel when you first saw yourself like this for the first time? It was quite a shock, actually. It didn't last too long, though. I was never too attached to my body. Later in my life, that was almost literal. You know what the downside of this body is? I can't get drunk. If you want to call that a downside, if you wanted to drink alcohol for the taste, there are many alternatives. Drunkenness is part of the whole experience. What though? Lilum can get drunk with no problem. Yeah, but in their case, their brain's a computer attached to their body. Getting drunk causes their brains to reduce the input speed to their bodies. Depending on the model, their drunk subroutine might throw in a different behavioral cycle even. It's hard to get drunk when the whole point of you being in a jar is figuring out exactly how you work. Huh, you're right. Hey, Jill! Oh, Elma. Just, oh, Elma? Where's the courtesy one would expect from plebeian bar staff? Welcome to Valhalla. What can I get you? You want a bat? Yeah, really. Real quick. I'll chill. Oh. I'm with you real quick. I'm with you? Yeah. Yeah, sure, no problem. We'll be right back. Hear me! Be right back. Excuse us for a second. You like coffee?
Alright, I'm coming back, I'm coming back. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, whoa, whoa, Ellie's, Ellie's, damn it. I got that thing working again, so let me see if I can figure out. There it is. Oh, I don't have it clipped. That did work, right? Well, just to make sure. There we go. Me! I'm on a motherfucking dinosaur! Look at me! There we go. Ellie's is lurking while she decorates her house. Oh, hi, Ellie! Well, Valhalla, what can I get you? Happy? Now when you put it that way. Why, hello there, beautiful. Whoa! You hurt my feelings with that, darling. Sorry, you don't see talking disembodied brains every day. I mean, I did work a summer in a little maintenance, but even then, those were talking heads. Oh, don't worry about it. At least you're not running or fainting. Your name is Alma, right? I'm Taylor. Nice to meet you, Taylor. Say, Alma, can I buy you a drink? Sorry, I only date people who are at least 50% organic and have at least one face. Hmm. I know just just what to strive for, then. Just kidding. It'd make me happy to make you happy by buying you a drink. Does that bother you? I guess if Jill's the bartender, I don't have a problem with that. Awesome, I'll pay you for your next drink, then. What will you have? I have a cobalt velvet. And you, Taylor? I'm fine, actually. You're gonna have me drink alone? I don't want to drink that much. Okay, then. Cobalt velvet. All on the rocks and mixed. <clears throat> Your drink. Get out of here. Go. <sighs> Hope you enjoy it. You know, you've been nicer to me these past months than at least three guys have been in the past year. Judging from the way you two talk, I'm guessing you've been a client here for a while now, right? Only for about half a year or so, if memory serves right. Really? One would think it's been longer. Uh, feels like it's been longer. Shut up, you love me and you know it. So, you just started coming here and that was it? Well, the first time I came here, the other guy... Speaking of which, where's Pablo? Jillian. 
Archimedes. Don't know, adventuring or something. Anyways, the other guys served me the first time I came here. Nothing unusual there. Next time I showed up, Jill here was the one serving, and I don't know, I feel like she just gets me. There's this chemistry. We click. We click, she says. <laughs> the fact that I feel more chemistry with her than many other people is kind of sad, though. It's always good to see a nice friendship. Sadly, it's getting late, and I've got to go. I'll leave you two lovely ladies alone. See ya. Bye. Please come again. The tailor sure was nice. A bit weird at first, though. Apparently one of five brains being studied by scientists or something. There's a summary of it in this pamphlet. Let's see. Oh yeah, I've heard of them before. Can't believe I actually met one. Say, Alma, how many people are there in your family? Just curious. Well, aside from my mom and dad, we're five sis... Sorry, four sisters and one brother. Funnily enough, we all have names that start with the first five letters in the alphabet. So you're the eldest one? No, I'm actually the middle kid. You're the middle kid, but your name starts with an A? Don't think too much about it. I never said the order reflected our ages. <laughs> My sister Carlotta's the eldest one. Then there's Di Diana, just before me. Then comes Ava, and the bottom lies Belle. Sorry, the youngest one is Bernardo. Again. Oh, I should look up when this came out. Very progressive. Again, one of my favorite games. Never been alone, I'm guessing. Can't complain about that, I guess. It helps that we were never five in the same house. By the time Evita and Bernie were born, Diana and Carlotta had already moved. Speaking of family, today I came because I needed a break from everything that's been going on with them. You live with them? No, but Evita and Bernie do. Not to mention I visit them almost every day. Anyway, my second eldest sister, Diana, just, just separated from her husband. Ooh. Not even been a week, but she's already got some other guy in her bed. Ah, she left her kid with her husband's parents and pretty much forgot about them. Never mind the fact that they need to go to school and all that. Damn. Diana's life has always been messy, but these days she's really making it big. She wants time for herself to live her life. She didn't think about that when she married the guy at 20. She didn't think about that when marrying a guy she had only known for like three months. You should take your own advice. Hey, I'd never marry someone who could catch my attention so quickly, okay? Sure, there was that one time when it almost happened, but I blamed the damn stadium kiss cam. Kiss cam? I was going out with a guy my little sister introduced me to. Seems he was her friend's brother or something. We went out a couple of times and he invited me to a basketball game. Mood was nice, but then later the kiss cam focused on us. Instead of kissing me, he proposed. Jesus. I almost got caught in the mood and accepted it. Huh. But I take it you rejected him. In a stadium. On the fucking kiss cam. Went out for like... We went out for like three weeks. I don't know. Maybe he wanted to get in my pants with the old sex on the wedding night line. But I honest to God can't understand why he thought it would be a good idea. It sounds too convoluted, you know? Proposing and waiting for their wedding night just for sex? Never underestimate the lengths a man is willing to go to get you in their bed. I've seen more convoluted plots over the years. I'm feeling tempted to ask, but I'll pass. Hold on. Sorry, that was annoying me. Feeling tempted to ask, but I'll pass. Want anything else? Hmm, what's that bottle? Oh yeah, it's just a just some realm a client gave me yesterday. A gift? What did you do? Good enough service, I'm guessing. Kasi Kasi K? Yeah, interesting name. What does it mean? Oh jeez, it's Kasik. I should have known that. Kasik is the name of the chieftain in some native tribes. I see. Do you know? Do you want me to serve you some of this? I'll pass. I don't have too many good memories where, where rub's involved. Give me a fringe weaver instead, will you? All right. Oh boy, she wants to get drunk. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. All aged and mixed. One fringe weaver. What kind of memories do you have with rum? Nothing you need to worry about. 
okay. All right, now's my turn. Now's my turn to ask questions about what? what kind of family is your family? Well, I'm an only child. My mom and dad split amicably. My mom was a violinist, so she was always away from home with the orchestra. But most of my time with my dad, my aunt, and my grandpa. Aside from that, I'd say my childhood was quite uneventful. Huh, didn't you get something like your mom's artistic vein or something? I played the violin until I was around 16, I think. What made you stop? I don't know, I just kind of said that's it one day and stopped. What about cousins of the rest of your family? I see very little of them, actually. Mainly because my dad moved away from most of them. Most of my mom's family live in France to boot. So your mom's French? Yep. Can you speak French? Mon aeroglissia es plein d'anglais. <laughs> Ooh, what does that mean? Rubbish? I don't know. I can't speak French. <laughs> Taking too long, man. Stop. There we go. Thank you. I did try, though, but college started and I stopped taking classes. Funny thing, I actually have a cousin from my mom's side that lives close by. But you'll be hard-pressed to make make me spot him in a crowd. You're kind of lucky, you know? All my mom's side of the family lives here. The chances of me meeting someone I'm related to on the streets are ridiculously high. But yeah, that's the primer of my family. Nothing too interesting, sadly. Your mom's a French violinist and you call that uninteresting? I'm wondering if your family has ever made a fuss over you being a hacker. Hacker made it makes it sound too exotic. It's like if you if I called you a mixologist. Ah, damn it. Please don't ever call me a mixologist. See? I mean, hacker is a good way to summarize it, but it's not the best. I'm a security consultant. People want to find flaws in the security of their systems, and I do my best to pinpoint where it breaks. Be it Glitch City or anywhere else in the world, they need security. I'm their woman. You've told quite a few stories about cracking into databases to retrieve info like some sort of mercenary, though. That doesn't change the fact that hacker is not the best term to use. Makes the whole thing sound illegal when it's actually an honest job. Didn't you tell me you once secured some incriminating f pics from a guy's cell phone? A mostly honest job. Sheesh! What made you become a hacker, by the way? I've always been a sucker for puzzles. Even as a kid, I've always had a Sudoku or crossword with me. But at some point, they started feeling kinda samey. When I started college, I took a course on system security. It felt like the kind of puzzle I was looking for. I mean, there are all kinds of things involved in breaching net security. You need to attack the stuff from different angles. And it's something that's always evolving. The whole point of everything is to strengthen security. Every time you think you've got the gist of it, they change everything. So it's kind of like an always evolving puzzle. A puzzle that I'm in. I help make harder at that. Huh, I didn't think about it that way. It is less action-y than what movies make it up to be, though. No real-time frantic typing, nothing like that. Still, seeing my code break through something, it's an amazing feeling. Will you have anything else? Huh, I'll have a classy drink. Any classy drink. Here goes nothing. Here goes nothing indeed. Specialty drink time! Hold on. Specialty drink time. Joke, here we go. One. One. Two. Two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Here we go. The flaming ball light. Here you are. Yep, just what I needed. Thanks.
I say, Joe, what's the worst that could happen if you don't get your drinks right? Well, people have the right to not give me money. They don't pay for it, I don't get my bonus. No bonus means less money and no tips, which doesn't help because I have to pay bills. Oh, I see. You have to make an effort to pay your, to pay your bills? Nope. <laughs> you have no idea how much I hate you right now. Well, my job pays pretty well, and I'm not the kind to spend too much on things other than food and bills. Maybe maintenance on my hands and new equipment, but aside from that... Oh, I know! If you have trouble with your bills, why not live with me? We can be roommates! Dunno. Moving my stuff through the stairs because the elevator's broken. Having to move my liquor collection. Never mind the fact that my cat's a shut-in that got very upset the one time I moved some furniture around. The idea of moving just gives me a headache. You shouldn't take things too ser so seriously when I say them, you know? I don't, but I thought about it before. Now I need some air. I'm gonna go... I'm gonna take my break. You wanna come? Are you inviting me to the back of the bar? You should invite me to dinner first. Every minute you waste making jokes is time taken away from my break. Fine, let's go. Boss, I'm taking my break. Call if anyone comes in. Sure, sure. Oh, we have to deal with Virgilio? Virgilio. You'll see, he's annoying as shit. Oh boy. He's one of those guys where... I... I want a drink. But I'm not going to tell you what drink. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you hints to the drink. Mm -hmm. Sorry if I'm breathing on you about that. Also known as a, uh... Dude, last night I was fucking losing it with two behind us. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, how do I have two squares behind me? <laughs> People would say something? Nope! <laughs> uh, cold, cold, cold. Yeah, we're good. Sure is chilly out there. It's kind of refreshing. The hobo out there seems like a nice guy. <laughs> Billy Vine? Yeah, he's a cool guy. Very respectable. Of course she knows the name of the fucking hobo who lives out behind the bar. Apparently he got into some legal trouble and that's why he's like that. Really? He could also just be a very nice crackhead, though. Jesus. I have a cousin that lives like a hobo, actually. Really? It's a bit complicated, though. The problem is, his family has tried to get him to live with them, but his pride won't let him accept their help. He'd rather live on the streets for some reason. He can't tell with some people, sadly. Why did he become a hobo in the first place? Bad investments and debts. Bank evicted him from his house. Oh. It's a serious problem because he has epileptic epileptic attacks, but refuses to take his medication. Ooh. Ooh. I just don't get what's up with him. Honey, some service here. Mm. I'm here, don't scream. Oh ho! Were you two hanging out at the back of the bar? What kind of stuff are you doing? Just Shh. talking. Is that what they call it these days? <sighs> what do you want? Something soft, something sweet. No alcohol, please. Wouldn't it be the same if you just grabbed a soda from a vending machine? But I like you! Do you dislike my presence so much? Sweet non-alcoholic, you say? Alright. Dorothy wants something sweet no, and alcohol-free. So that would be a blue fairy. One flag ride, no. Ugh. Age mixed. Here, like you asked. See, you don't get this kind of treatment from vending machines. Unless you're Lawrence. But he has this weird idea that good service is the same as selling lukewarm cans of cola. Lawrence, a friend of mine, he's a vending machine. <laughs> oh. Oh, but how impolite of me. Huh? I'm lovely, and my name's Dorothy. Dorothy Hayes, nice to meet you. Oh, I'm Elma, the pleasure's mine. Dorothy, you say? Yep, why? Nothing, I guess I've heard about you before. 
Really? What kind of stuff? Tell me, tell me! Mostly about your, um, pluckiness. And here I was thinking it was because I'm a sex worker. So much for trying to be subtle. Hey, I take pride in my job, otherwise I wouldn't be doing it. Isn't it dangerous? I know how to take care of myself, thank you very much. Where do you work, Alma? I'm a hacker. Really? A full-fledged hacker? Not the kind that sees a computer logged into some account and says that's hacking, right? No, of course not. I've always been curious about how being a hacker works. You just start typing really fast while waiting for something to happen? No. I can explain, but I don't know if you'll get it. <laughs> we won't know till we try, right? Last time I said that I had to jam the plastic replica of a halogen light bulb up a crumb ass. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Wow. Oh my. That was deserved. It was a success! <laughs> okay, I'll do it! But I won't like, I like it. it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the puns. Okay, then let me try to explain in general how it works. Let's say I have to retrieve information from a company's database. All right. First, I do some research on the target, operating system, servers, and how the information is stored and all that. There have been a couple of occasions where I had to go in blind, but they're the exception rather than the rule. First, I secure things from my side. I start working behind proxies, websites, and through other more vulnerable computers I find on the way. Uh-huh. After that, I start testing the networks. I go through the basic protocols, try known exploits as long as they don't trigger any alarm. Once I've tested the ground, the fun starts. I go through all the security protocols, protocols and look to bypass them. Sometimes I have to look deeper into the code for the password itself. I see. Then, when I'm fully in, I go and retrieve user privileges. After that, I go and try to become a super user and get what I need. How do you do that? Well, there are a couple of ways. I can use a pre-made program to hack into an already existing account. I can use info someone already gave me. But the usual way is using a buffer overflow. But what happens next? What happens next? I create a back... I see her. Yeah. I create a backdoor of the system before leaving and covering my tracks. I can't... I can't handle it anymore! Oh my Escalate your user privileges, find flaws in my security! Here's something else. Sorry, I got carried away. No shit, what happened? Have you seen those movies or books where a couple does something like paint a picture or cook, but they make it sound like they're having sex instead? Suggestive scenes, yeah. Well, that whole thing was kind of like that for me. Really? I guess humans don't really get it because their minds don't upload to networks or anything. But trust me, if you recorded yourself giving a really detailed explanation in a really sexy voice, you'd make millions. Horny Lilim are an unexploited market. I see. Oh, looks like my ride is here. You're right? Yep, my brother-in-law came to look for me. Is it alright to ask that from him? That's okay. I've known him since preschool. It just so happened that he got married to my sister. Hey Dorothy, you need a ride? Can you drop me by 3rd Street? Sure, it's on the way. Yay, I'll take your offer then. Bye, honey. Later, Jill. Take care. The street seems noisy. Oh, client. Hello, welcome to Valhalla. What can I... Such a small, yet comfortable place. Truly an oasis of spiritual drinks in the midst of the suburban desert. Place where lost and corrupt souls can gather to forget their troubles for a while. How was his name from Beetlejuice? I don't remember. That guy. A nest where everyone from the most pathetic scum to the vilest trash junkie can just sit to kill their insides. Truly, a real persona non grata. That's Latin for mysterious place, by the way. I'm so smart and philosophical. Alright, we got ourselves a persona non grata here. What will you have then? 17. Next 
Excuse me? Oh, hey, Shroom. Hey, Shroom. What is this game about? It is a game about fixing drinks and... A cyberpunk dystopian society? But it. It's like a giant visual novel, but you get to mix drinks. Excuse me? I said 17. 7 plus teen. Coffee talk? I, th I think it came after this. This is like one of my favorite games, so I was showing her and she got into it, so... Twenty sixteen coffee talk. Yeah. Coffee talk came after, so it's, I guess it's kinda like it. I said seventeen, seven plus teen. What does that mean? What does it mean to you? Just be sure, 17 is about the drinking water, right? Only if you want it to be. The hell does that mean? I would I would go more that way. There was supposed to be a sequel to this, but it's been in development hell because the dev, the dev is dealing with some personal shit. Let's see. Six, four, five, six, two, three, four, five. That equals seventeen, right? Yes. Aged and mixed. Okay, explain. Total of the ingredients here add up to seventeen. Beautiful. What brings you here, mister? I'm Armando. Virgilio Armando. See, I introduced myself using age... Oh, okay, that makes sense. I never actually played it, so... See, I introduced myself using the Asian order because that's a lot more polite. Right. I came here looking for an otherworldly experience. I was passing by and saw this place is named Valhalla. I want to, want to see the souls of resting warriors, the wounded spirits of noble souls. A golden hall full of never-ending banquets and lively Valkyries looking over them. You have some arcade machines on the corner. <coughs> no, no, no. You're taking me too literally. You see, I'm being poetic. I'm giving a mystical air to be a mundane affair. I wanted to see drunk people. I wanted to see waitresses and food. Wanted to see the bar in all of its decadent glory. Well, you're out of luck. Today's been quite the slow day. Not that I'm very surprised given how things have been going on in the streets. Humans are a nasty bunch. That much is true. Making no ruckus coming at each other, but that's just... That's to be expected from the only mammal to kill its own. I'm not a zoologist, but I'm pretty sure that's not the case. Oh yeah? Then give me an, an example, non-zoologist -zoo not bartender. Like I said, I don't know the exact details, I just know that isn't right. Memory serves right, once a lion takes over a pride, every cub born from another lion is killed or something. Alright, hold on. Ah. Okay, cool. I think I still have it, so... Cool. Ah. <sighs> Takes over a pride. You can't take over a pride. Pride isn't a tangible thing. 
You need to stop making things up, not zoologist bartender. But going back on topic, do you know what the number 17 means? The atomic number of chlorine? No, and Chloe is a name, not a number, you know. The group where halogens are in the periodic table? Stop making up words like halogens, periodic, and table. Okay then, I give up. 17 is us. Huh? Every human has 17 pairs of chromosomes. That number is the whole foundation of you and me. It's... 23. 23. What is? Humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes, not 17. Well, they're both primal numbers, so it's the same idea. Primal? You want anything else? I'd like a single plum floating in perfume served in a man's hat. Okay. He wants a plum floating perfume in a... Son of a bitch. Luckily, I just so happen to have a plum fume. Right? Hopefully. Here. Ha! You didn't! Wait, you did. Enjoy! I will. I'll drink this, um, perfume. <sighs> Don't really have to. Yeah, that'd be silly. You win this round, bartender. Hey, bartender, have you ever thought about death? How? What if we're already dead, both of us? What? What tells you I even existed before I entered that door? How can you assure me that this reality is real and we were not, in fact, in heaven or hell all along? What if everything up to this point is just some stupid story written by an unemployed 20-something in his room? The punch you didn't make you feel reality. I don't care about any of that, actually. This reality is real for me, and that's what all that matters. Such a closed-minded way of seeing things. You need to... Get away from the factual facts. Open your mind to things beyond your reach. You'll never reach enlightenment if you don't start. The habanera has started. It means the twilight of the gods in German, by the way. Well, you're on your own, bartender. Enjoy your new world order. Um, what? A couple of nearby cars exploded, it seems. Oh, hell. Let me take a look out the window. Be careful. I see lots of flashes in the distance, most likely gunshots. Jill, come here a sec. What? About 5G of, of reports proving that several white knight squads have been used to cover... <laughs> Did somebody say Ragnarok? Illegal actions were released to the public by an unknown anarchist group. We're receiving reports of several units going rogue, using their weapons to hunt down anyone they find on the street. Several counterterrorism forces from neighboring cities have been dispatched in order to subdue the crazy units after a plea from the vice president. We're still waiting for a declaration from the Zaibatsu Corps CEO on the subject, but until then, things are ugly in and outside of that bank, it seems. I'd recommend you stay here tonight. It's too dangerous to even think about going outside. What if they break in? They won't. Even then, the bar has quite the security system. And I'll be here protecting you as an added bonus. <sighs> yeah, I guess I'll stay tonight. I'll get you the spare mattress I have. Do you mind sleeping in my office? No, I guess it's fine. Good. Let's hope everything gets solved by the morning. I'll have the Zinkatu on hand, just in case. The metal bat with nails? <laughs> There's nothing I can't bash. <laughs> Say, Gil, for... Hope everything's better by tomorrow. Got through another day. A sex break. Oh, I think. Rise and shine. <sighs> morning. It's 11 a.m. though. It's morning for me on the weekends and any other day. How's everything outside? Still noisy, but forces have been deployed to take care of most of them at least. How so? Zaibatsu like Corps' president is pleading with anyone to stop the rogue white knights. Neighboring city forces were deployed quickly and have subdued most of the opposition. There have also been reports of white knights just freezing, like they were petrified somehow. Make
make it sound like some god suddenly decided to put everything in place. Well, I'm just glad no bullets are flying in and out of the whole building. Sure, there's still some bad apples out, and it's not really safe yet, but it was worse last night. There also seems to be a civilian force lynching any white knight they spot. Not only are the white knights a problem, regular folks are on edge too. What her say is okay. Should we be worried about guilt? That kid knows how to take care of himself. Okay. I'm sure that whatever it is that he's doing, he's safe. Dare I say, even safer wherever he is than here. We sure hope so. Are we going to work today? Nah, things are too nasty right now. Let's take the Sunday off. Oh, alright. Say, do you want me to help you get to your apartment? Actually, yeah, I'd appreciate that. Okay, then let me lock things up and we'll go. We'll grab something for lunch on the way. Sounds good. Hanging out with the boss time. And here we are. <clears throat> home sweet home. Thanks a lot. Hey boss, want to hang out for a bit? Huh? Yeah, grab a beer, chill out for a bit. Mostly to thank you for helping me. Well, I don't have much to do anyway, so yeah, sure. I did tell you you should invite me to your apartment sometime, didn't I? Oh yeah, you did. What worries me a bit is that beer always leads to something else. To more beer? I was going to say to one of us going through the Spanish announcer's table. <laughs> but I think we're safe here. Come on in, then. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, I don't smoke. Don't mind me, though. Smoke if you wanna. Thanks. Sit. Bless you. Say, how's the chilly weather treating you? It gets cold from time to time, but nothing the kotatsu and the heater can't fix. Oh, right, boss. You're not very good with the cold, are you? You know it. You didn't bring your jacket here, either. Yeah, I left it at home when going to the bar yesterday. <clears throat> wasn't that cold I didn't expect to spend the night at the bar. Would you like a sweater or something? Oh, don't mind me. I insist. I have this hoodie from some time ago and it was too big for me. Why buy it then? It was dirt cheap. Right. Wait, where did you get this one? You know, some flea market ages ago. Why? Nothing. It's just like the one I had many years ago. What happened to it? Too much use. It just ripped. I see. Keep it if you want. I never use it for anything anyway. Oh, uh, we'll see. Come to think of it, how old are you, boss? I'm eternally 17. <laughs> Fair enough. 17 plus how much? 17 plus I'd have to cut your tongue out if you knew. Alright. Let me go change into something more comfortable. Take your time. <laughs> the cat. Yep. Say, Jill, there's a blue-eyed mass of black fur glaring in my general direction. Oh, that's just four. He's just wary of new any new visitors. Cats will be cats, I guess. He'll warm up quickly enough. Just give him time. He's unusual looking. Blue eyes on a black cat. They usually have green. Yeah, weird, huh? First I thought they were like that because he was small, but they never changed. Do you have any pets, boss? Back at home, we had a bear. I... Ah, uh, I see... What? Good old Bosco. He kept intruders away better than any dog. <laughs> Right. Huh, this picture here isn't something you see every day. What, me taking a sap, such a sappy pic? No, a framed picture on printed paper. It's so vintage. Who are these? That's, um... The one on the right is Lenore, my ex-girlfriend. The one on the left is Gabriella, her sister. Huh, is this peak recent or... Actually, that one's from three to four years ago. Look exactly the same. Only 27. What did you expect? That's why they say kids the kids are the ones that get old. I thought it was recent because you usually don't see people displaying pictures of their exes so openly. Let alone a printed and framed one. Did you two break up on good terms then? You even hesitated a bit when calling her your, her your ex. <sighs> Let's just say that everything ended with both of us saying mean things. Me storming out of her house, breaking a couple of things on the way out. We never broke up formally, and I guess I still have feelings for her. I just went away, haven't said a word since. Really? It's hard to picture you doing such a thing. You look so happy in the pic. Why well, have her pic out like this then? I just couldn't get my mind off something that Alma said to me. About missing having the warmth of someone else pressed against your side. 
Using them as a pillow, mixing your perfume with their, theirs. Putting your head in their chest, listening to their breathing as they pet your head. Dozing off knowing that they're there, watching you, protecting you. I don't know, I felt nostalgic, then miserable. I'll just put this away. I mean to apologize, but I feel like it's too late now. Whenever I go out, there's this fear in the back of my head that I'll meet her in the street. I just don't know if I can face her again, let alone talk to her. I'd be a mess. It's never too late to apologize, Jill. Maybe. What's that on the table? Looks like an aunt. It's nothing! Nothing! Please! No, oh, please give that to me! Oh, well, alright. I saw nothing. Don't worry. Anyway, let's grab some beers. Guide me. Damn, you have lots of beer. Well, the BTC gives me discounts on the point card I can use every time I buy their alcohol. With that, beer is actually the cheapest drink I can get. Is there any difference between the drinks of the bar and these? Drinks of the bar are more addictive, flavorful, and also stronger than the ones they sell in stores. <sighs> Besides, the one in the bar is more of a double IPA. This one is more of a Pilsner. In English, please. This one's lighter in color and lighter in flavor. No, it doesn't taste like it lighter to me. <laughs> is this the one made with that, um, what was the name of the base liquid you use at the bargain? Nutriogenic Diometrical Lidogenol, or NDL. Isn't this too? a supplement or something, right? <sighs> it was an experimental fluid they created to replace water when the maiden kissed polluted water supplies. Effects of pollution turned out to be temporary, so NDL never went into mass production. But the BTC still commissioned it for use in bars. And is this one made with it? Let's see. Yep, here it is, near the end. NDO and core starch. Corn starch? It serves as a stabilizer, if I remember correctly. They need it, need it for packaged drinks. See, and I just realized something. What? You're a nerd, Jill. Guilty as charged. I still have that bottle of rum somewhere around. You want some of it? We have some too? Not really, no. <laughs> leave, it be, leave, leave it like that. I'm not letting you drink beer alone. That's not how drinking with friends works. You consider me a friend then, boss? Why wouldn't I? I don't know. What with being my boss and all, I was never too sure. Well, in case you had any doubts, yes, I consider you one of my best friends. That's sweet. Well. Besides, you and Gil are always so diligent and responsible that I'm, I'm boss in name only anyway. That's good to know. On a side note, it surprised me you kept that poster of me in the room. And even more that you hung it in plain sight. When I gave it to you, it was more of a more or less a joke, you know. Does it make you uncomfortable? If it doesn't make you uncomfortable, why would it make me uncomfortable? It's my own face. I'm still wondering why you did it though. Aside from filling an empty spot on the wall, I don't really know. I thought it was funny too. Boston name only, Bino. I guess it's like if someone gave you, I don't know, <laughs> a dildo shaped trophy or something and you had it there as a conversation starter. <laughs> Although no one comes here anyway, so it's kind of pointless. What? No steamy nights of passion? Not since a year ago, I think, and I'd rather not talk about what happened then. Someone hurt you? Because if they did, I can go dish out the pain. Jeez. Oh, no, nothing of the sort. Different kind of mess. Uncomfortable mess. Uh, not being able to have sex for reasons mess. But I didn't know you have my back, though. That's what friends are for. Wait, 
You talk about the poster and compare it to having a dildo shaped trophy. <laughs> Did you just call me dildo face? That's what friends are for. Hey Joe, where did you get that black black four ball? Yeah. Well, as with any black cat or house cat in general, he's actually a stray. I found him in the alleys near the building, not long after I moved here, I think. <clears throat> I see. Quite the sight, though. He was cornered by all these dogs, but they were keeping their distance. He was holding his ground, hissing and scratching as much as he could. There's a fried chicken bucket nearby that had some rainwater in it, so I threw the water over the dogs. They ran and I figured the cat's mom would be nearby, so I left. Then I noticed people looking in my direction as I walked. Turns out the little shit started following me. <laughs> <laughs> so you brought it home. At first I wanted to see if, it, if I could find him a new home, but having him welcome me whenever I come back came back was just too much for my heart, so he ended up staying. I had a situation like that once over in Indiana. Mm -hmm. I opened the door and I went out to have a cigarette and there was a cat there chilling with me. We had a nice conversation because I was drunk as hell. And then when I opened my door, the son of a bitch tried to get inside my house and I did not let him in. I wonder if some days what would happen if I actually let him in. Oh, my mom would have had a fit. Yeah. It's Destiny, girl. When he came, he was so cute, though. Not like the fat mess that's sleeping on the table. Hey, you're not a spring chicken yourself, you know. Oh. Shit, I actually did that in front of someone else. Oh. Anyway. Don't anyway me. Do you normally speak for your cat like that? Maybe. Like me with the dogs. <sighs> I wonder if Gil's alright. You worried about him? Make it sound like I'm some emotionless little robot. You can be hard to read. I wouldn't worry about Gil so much, though. There's three things I know for certain about him. First, he can take care of himself. Second, you can sincerely trust him. And third, he absolutely hates bell pepper. He does? I've seen him even reject food that has been in contact with him. Man, what a baby. Unless he's allergic to something. He's not. Man, what a baby. How'd you meet such a guy? He showed up in the door of the bar. He what? Oh, shortly after the whole incident with Robert and the levitation potion. Right, levitation potion. The slow day and he just showed up at the bar. I offered him a drink, but he said he didn't have any money on him. Couldn't leave him alone, so I pretty much gave him the drinks for free. And after a couple, he broke down crying. <laughs> he, what? I don't know what he did, but he was really, really regretting it. He wanted a second chance or whatever, and I told him if he could wash himself, I'd find him a job. And I'll be damned, he looked totally different the next day. Damn. Damn. I tried and failed to find out anything about him, so I decided to take him at face value. I judged him for what he did as an employee. And aside from the occasional escapade, he's been as loyal as loyal gets. I returned the favor in kind, covering his ass from time to time, sometimes literally. Yeah. Surprising me is that you took him in so easily. I can take care of myself and I always kept an eye on him. And besides, after the whole Robert thing, I couldn't ignore someone that desperate so easily. I see. You made the bar more lively yourself, you know. How so? Well, with the regulars you've earned, of course. Like that blonde titty hacker, I can't remember her name. Alba? That's gonna say Armitage. Well, she's hot, I'll give you her I'll give her that much. She's also a nice person in general, but damn she's hot. Are you alright, Jill? Yeah, why? It's weird to see you say so openly that someone's hot. What? Even you can see she has a hot body, boss. You find no objections here. I mean, I'd be lying if I said I hadn't thought about taking her to a room and... Jill, are you sure you aren't drunk? I am. I mean, I'm sure I'm not. I mean... 
<clears throat> but those are the thoughts I leave to myself. I don't think I can handle her in a relationship. She has weird standards. That and she's as straight as straight gets. She's still a lovely person, though. That she became a regular is a blessing. Any regular is a blessing when you get down to it. There's also that sex worker robot girl. Ah, Dorothy. She intrigues me, though. I've seen a lot of sex workers over the years, and she seems pretty giddy. It's not that she likes her job, but rather that she takes to it with her such childish excitement. I kind of noticed that, too, but then again, Lilum can be weird. You think? Lilum operates some really foreign logic. I mean, they don't really share our fear of mortality. Even if their bodies are destroyed, their minds are already backed up at the collective source. If they lose an arm, they can reattach it or replace it. Depending on the circumstances, they might not even feel pain at all. It's not like they haven't attained human-like emotions like fear or love, but they are different. Like a different culture, if you must. Huh, I didn't see it that way. Aside from that, Dorothy is a DFC-72. It's a social interactions model or something. Let them get positive reinforcement straight from their bodies if they're fulfilling their main purpose, so... Guessing she gets a built-in push whenever she's in a meaningful or challenging social interaction. Interesting. The name Lilum is a bit weird, though. It is? You'd expect them to be called bots or dolls, but Lilum doesn't convey the image of automatons. Just a tip. Bots and dolls are considered slurs by them. Bot is akin to calling them retarded and doll is ca like calling them fake. Thanks for the advice. That aside, do you know why they're called Lil? As far as I know, because they all come from a bigger AI called Lilith. And Lil are Lilith's offspring in Jewish folklore. Oh, cool. Hey, speaking of names, why don't you like being called by your full name? I have no idea what you're talking about. Don't act stupid. Back when you first transferred, I called you Julianne and you almost tore me a new one with your glare. See? Like that. <laughs> it's no big secret, but it's one of those things that feels silly when you say it out loud. Try me. Well, did you ever watch Model Warrior Julianne? Not all of it, but my little sister's a big fan of the reruns. Back when I was in elementary school, I was a huge fan of the show. I had everything from the dolls, the costumes, the lunchboxes. Didn't help that it was one of those shows that got strapped literally everywhere. Saw a couple of episodes once, they were really nice. It was beyond nice. The show's about a model who can transform into an armor clad magic knight. She fights demons born from greed and vanity. How the show presented Jules hated, hating her job because it invited enemies. And yet still found solace in trying to be a role model. Hell, the main character wasn't a kid. Julianne was an adult that became younger when transformed. Oh, you need me? You're getting a bunch of stuff? Well, it's... Oh. That's not bad. Damn! It was a sale. by heart. What about your... Oh, yeah, we could do that. There we go. Hold on one second. Alright, let's have you in sale. And these... Oh. <laughs> It'll give me a chance to throw away it Okay with that? Yeah, I don't care. That'd be sweeter. Our money. I know, I'm just. Sure. I mean, you just threw out a whole bunch of stuff, too, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. I said stuff. Yeah. That's part of the reason I wanted to. And I saw that email pop up, I was like, oh. There you go. I think that should cover it, right? It. 
Didn't we just do this? Just hit continue. There you go. Oh, hopefully it didn't do that twice. No, no, no. It, one was to get all my information and proof. I think we're to load. It's been very slow. Well, it is. Like after back. <laughs> oh, here we go. <clears throat> No problem. I just got notified. <laughs> Actually, there's another game that like co bought me that I kind of want to play mm -hmm. after this one. Okay. Actually, there's two. One is Neon Cab and the other one is Cloud Punk. One is when you're... They're both when you're taxi drivers, but you're playing through a cyberpunk world dealing with customers. Gotcha. Anyways. <clears throat> I'd say it was a pretty ambitious kid show. Even by today's standards. Just the fact that her enemies were literally issues dealing with beauty standards of body image. Challenging as fuck. Oh, you got excited there. That is the problem. Back then, I was obsessed with jewels. I sang the songs, dressed like her, I could even recite full chapters. Something tells me you still can. Oh, hey, Susan! Hey, Susan! Hold on, I got it. There we go. Ha-ha! <laughs> I thought you were going to sleep, girl. That's beside the point. It was nice while I was in elementary school, but then I went to middle school. And what a surprise, tweens are jackasses. Yep. They went out of their way to tease me about the things I did back then. I don't hold it against Jules, I just... I always hold my grudge against those fuck jobs. Sounds rough. You know how most girls worry about their thighs at that age? I worried about their, about jerkasses singing the theme tune to the show mocking me. Anyways, every time someone calls me Julianne or Jules, I instinctive, instinctively react negatively. Pavlov would be proud of me. I never talk about it because I find the whole thing too silly in retrospect. And yet, it affects you even today. There's nothing wrong with it, though. It's actually kind of reasonable. Sure hope so. Come to think of it, what kind of kid were you, boss? When I was a toddler, I was the kind to always fight with kids bigger than me. <laughs> Then puberty happened, and I became the Merriam-Webster definition of shallow jerkwad. Around the time I turned 16, I realized what an idiot I was and went on to become who I am today. The less I talk about those years from 12 to 15, the better. Fair enough. Ah, oh, fair enough. Oh, that's right. You're the opposite of that. Ugh. So she's dealing with heat while we're dealing with cold. Ugh. I've got freaking candles lit and shit. I a candle. Fair enough. Say, boss, how do you like them, man? 2D. <laughs> 2D? Yes, I don't mind anything as long as that thing is cute or 2D. How about you? Um, back in high school, I liked them funny. In college, I liked them successful. After a while, I just wanted them stable. And now, and now, I don't know. I stopped caring about them being funny. My high school boyfriend started conflating cheering me up with mocking me when I'm down. I don't mock you, do I? No. I didn't think so. Okay. I also stopped caring about them being successful. I realized half the time they had no qualms about cheating with me or on me. <laughs> oh, we would. Yeah, we would. That'd be fun. Uh, but I gotta get through peak first. <laughs> She's gotta get through hospital shit first, too. I stopped caring about them being stable. And I realized they were kind of the, the kind of person I was trying not to become. Not become stable? 
Where's this guy who became so obsessed with holding a stable job that he hated... He hated... He started becoming... F being physically ill. I almost got that way. I swear to God, sometimes my stomach is... Controlled literally by stress. Anyways, not only that, the last time I managed to get some, I ended up throwing the guy out. He took incredible offense with how I smoked on the bed after sex. Bed could catch fire, you know? Not you, too. Kind of envy Alma for, for that. At least when she dumps a guy, it's for less petty reasons. Sigh. Are you okay? I'm fine, it's just, it all boils down to the fact that I can't get my mind off Lenore lately. She's gotta have a baby first. No, oh, Lord. Coming eventually. We're working on it. She was, and she was all of what I just said. She made me laugh, she had a good position, and was stable. She's also smart, caring, and why can't I get my mind off the whole thing? It's maddening. Maybe I should go and apologize. Maybe I should. Maybe that will make me rest easier at night, get my mind off things for a while. I don't even care about going back to her, but... but... Ugh! Hey, Jill. Have you tried thinking about clothes for four? Clothes for... Hey. Listen, I know how you must feel. But you can't let all that cloud your senses. Next time you feel overwhelmed by your thoughts, try distracting yourself. Like with, say, think about what kind of clothes you can put on four. Four is her cat. Yeah. You know, boss, I'm a bit curious about your circle of friends. What kind of people do you have in it? Keep in mind, you're included in this circle, too, so any insults you hurl will apply directly back to you. Anyways, I have this friend I've known for a long time, a red-headed, glasses-wearing gun nut called Iris. The one you called for the helmet thing? That one. She's managing a BTC bar in Panama right now, if I remember correctly. She's managing a bar, too? I got the idea from her, actually. Oh. It's called... Ah. Oh. <laughs> That's what he said. It's called N1 N N1 RV Anna, and if you think thought the city was dangerous, that's what the sequel game is going to eventually be called, but currently the dev is having mental issues, so mm. we may never get the game. Still looking forward to it. To see the people, people she has to deal with her. Piracy ain't nothing to fuck with. And means it's an annex to another business. What else does she do there? I think the bar was originally her hotel's bar. She moved the bar to its own building elsewhere and opened N1 and N1 RV and B in the hotel instead. Weird decision. I believe she said she wanted a place away from the noisy, rich tourists that go to the hotel. So that bar is her woman cave. Woman cave. That aside, let's see. Friends, friends. I guess there's also my little sister, but that's a given. <laughs> Not always. Why would? Then that always. Mom are always friends with their siblings. You took a long time to get there. We got older. We fought a lot when we were younger. Hell, it took me a long time with my brother. Oh, that was. Old. I still haven't met him recently, though, so I that know. doesn't count. Oh, there was also my old partner from when I was with the Neo San po San Francisco Police Force. Well, that's. Good old Alexi. Should give her a call sometime. Wait, you were in the what? I've done lots of things, Jill. I spent a short time collaborating with the police force. I've been a wrestler, an MMA fighter, chimney cleaner, lumberjack, pet shop attendant, corporate mascot. Corporate what? I still don't see my face from on some websites from time to time. Anyways, aside from you, Gil, my sis, Iris, and Lexi, uh, I guess there's a lot of people that don't want to see me in harm's way. Mostly because they're the ones that want to hurt me. <laughs> what about you? Guess I have acquaintances here and there. Yeah. Back at home in college, I went out a lot. I felt more like going out was a pleasure rather than the people involved. Aside from you and Gil, my closest friends since moving here is Alma and... Oh, and Dorothy. I mean, sure, there's always four, but that cat's, that cat's a hermit that refuses to go out. And you know he's a cat. Hey, a cat's a f cat's fine too, you know. 
Okay, boss, I have to know. About what? About your arm. I'd rather not talk about it. Come on, I want to know how you got it. Fine. Yes? I need a couple of favors to get it. I accept no less than state-of-the-art tech. That's how I got it. It's technically correct, but come on! Why well, do you want to know how I got it? I want to know more about you. You're always so cool and awesome. Can you at least tell me if it does something cool? It does have a couple of utilities installed, yeah. There's an HDD in the forum I use to save assorted data. There's a flashlight and a clock, but many prosthetic arms have those nowadays, kind of like watches. How, do you how did you feel when you lost it? To be honest, I was sad, but I was also satisfied. Yeah, I lost my dominant arm, but its sacrifice helped me a helped a bigger purpose. If I had to lose another limb to accomplish such a thing again, I'd totally do it. <laughs> but of course, I just hope it doesn't come to that ever again. Now you're just teasing me. You'll hear nothing else from me, young lady. Mm -hmm. Did you want to stop? I'm 13 currently. I'm going a little bit longer. Alright, I gotta use the restroom. Do you mind if I drink the last two beers? Okay, cool. I'm gonna use the restroom now. We're into chapter two, finally. Gotcha. So, do you need to go with anything? Yeah, I'm gonna go too. Alright, we will be right back. Oh. What? Eight. Currently have 6,955, so we should be okay. 19th? On the 24th, so yeah, we can make a shit ton of money, trust me. I'm following a guide. Haha. Because -ha. I'm a cheater. I'm a cheater! Well, not, not you, but no.
She's mad at you. I'm about to get a phone. Uh, she'll be alright. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, now we have to pick up a Daruma for her. A what? This is a Daruma. A Daruma doll is a hollow round Japanese traditional model. Traditional doll modeled after Bodhi Harama, the founder of the Zen tradition of Buddhism. These dolls, though typically red and depicting a bearded man, vary greatly in color depending on design and blah blah blah. Basically, what you what happens is you purchase one of these mm -hmm. and you make a wish, or you make a promise. Sorry, and then once you finish the promise, you fill in the eyes. Gotcha. So it goes from that to looking like that. Big black spots. Yeah. Anyways. So now we gotta purchase a Daruma. Oh, boss left the hoodie anyway. Oh, she didn't take it with her. Oh, we're gonna save. Because that was a long talk. Yeah. Oh, let's see... Nope, she's. it's the same thing. Well, there's more new stuff here. Poor guy. They arrested a hacker. Nope. Don't care. Some deep ship happened. Okay. It's a message board like Reddit. Gotcha. Added a book in there for the. The order? For that the we're order. working on? Yes. Sounds good. The book that. You know me, I don't care. They were gonna read next month. They're not actually doing an actual book club book. Alright, so I'm gonna do. That's a Terry Pratchett book. Which one? Hog's Father. That's a Discworld novel. Oh. Okay. It looked interesting. It's Christmas related. Yes, that's... It's their version of Christmas. I, ho I wholly endorse you reading Discworld novels. They're <laughs> hilarious. There's a Phantom of the Opera one. Oh. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Anyways, we'll see how that one goes. Sorry, I, I got excited for a second there. I don't own any Discworld books, so I'm going to steal that one from you. Get it. Get this. We're going to ah. together. That too. G Gil? Oh, hey guys. How the hell did you get it? I have a copy of the key, remember? Wait, that's how you greet me after so many days? I didn't buy it. What? Shit. Oh, I didn't buy the Daruma. It's a crack Daruma? Yep. Jill bought what she wanted. She's pleased with herself. She will surely focus at work. Sorry about that. Back to work. Uh, oh, hey guys. How the hell did you get it? I have a cup of tea. That's how you greet me after so many days? I never doubted you'd be fine. If anything, you'd have to cut your paycheck. I'd have to cut your paycheck for leaving for so many days without notice. See, Jill? He'll never. He'll be here on Monday like nothing ever happened. Wait, why does he have a copy of the key and I don't? The need for you having a key never arose. Fair. True. Anyway, glad you're fine, Gil. Thanks, I guess. What, are you going to make me wash the bathrooms again? Not today. Listen, I don't know who the hell you are, you really are, or what's trying to come back to bite you in the ass. But remember, there are people that actually care about you. Don't just leave like you did. Especially after all hell broke loose. At least, you, at least give us a sign that you're still alive. So you were worried? 
Isn't that normal? When it comes to you, I don't know. Shut up. She's right, though. You shouldn't make ladies worry so much. Check if the cats didn't move the internet antenna, would you? Fine, fine. Hey, boss, why'd you leave the hoodie at my place? Because it's yours? But I told you you could keep it. Sorry, I couldn't find it myself to take it. Why? Partly because I didn't feel right taking it. But mostly because I thought you'd totally look cute in it. I see. Don't think I'm rejecting a gift of yours, it's just... Preserving cuteness is one of my principles. Right. <laughs> right. Are you still worried about the whole bar closure thing? Of course I am. Not like I can't work because of it, but you know... All we can do is enjoy whatever time we have left here as best as we can. Yeah. So cheer up. Clients smell sadness and fear, and we don't want that either. I'll go to my office. Okay. That is fine. Did I miss anything? Not really, no. Anyways, let's start the day. Get this stuff out. I like to change the music because otherwise it gets bitchy. No. It does? Yeah. People are like, well, the music seems very savvy. We get a lot of regulars. Time to mix drinks and change lives. I totally didn't name my stream right. Yeah, serve drinks. Nah. Well. It'd be cool. Oh, R2D. I, I've never... It's Red Dead Redemption 2. Oh. I haven't played the second one. Mostly because I was avoiding the online portion of it. I love the first one, though. Oh, yeah, Gil? Huh? Glad to see you're fine. I mean it. Thanks. Excuse me, I'm looking for Dana Zane. May I have your name? Tell her it's Brian. Just a sec. Boss, I'm Brian, guys, looking for you. Tell her I'll be there in a bit. She'll, um, you heard her. It's all right, I'll wait. It's weird for someone to come asking for her, though. Not so weird when you're BTC's regional manager in these parts, uh-oh. I kind of figured. Yeah, it seems like something Gavin would play all the time. Yeah, I guess that's... Um, I guess I didn't give you the best first impression. <laughs> Don't worry, I know who I'm dealing with. I'm not a fan of people treating me too nicely because of my position anyways. Handily like I'm just another client. Alright, I can do that. What can I get you, Mr. Brian? Let's go with the basics. The sugar rush, please. Coming right up. Yeah, we'll just stick with that. All mixed. Here. Yep, this one's nice. Back in training, they made a big deal out of sugar rushes. Why? They're like the Fridays of mixing drinks. They're the most basic thing, but people can still mess them up. Sugar rushes are simple enough that you only need to follow instructions. Can't even do that? Your future as a bartender is not bright. Huh, they never told me that. You're Jill, right? Yep, that's me. Dana has talked quite a bit about you. Really? I guess you must have a few questions for me, am I right? Mostly concerning the closure warning Valhalla got. Can you disclose any information? Stop. I shouldn't, but you have the right to know. Thanks. Don't mention it. Now where to start. You saw the news on the information leaked during the Apollo Trust Bank incident, right? About the White Knights having lots of members from criminal organizations in their ranks? Turns out the White Knights weren't the only ones with shady people. Some of those some some of those same folks have been trying to elude legal problems using BTC certified bars. It would BT stand. They're basically the governing board who manages the bars. Mm -hmm. That's why Valhalla is closing. Oh. The BTC bars have their own protocols, meaning the White Knights can't dig too deeply. At least not without going through a ton of paperwork first, giving the criminals time to cover their tracks. Although it takes a bit of time to set up, it has apparently proven an, an effective method for money laundering. 
Where does Valhalla come in? Young bars are the ones under the under the radar right now. The modus, the low income ones, are the primary suspects. It's not just Valhalla. Any small bar with small income is being investigated heavily right now. So the closure notice is due to low sales. Among the reasons a bar can get axed, low sales is the rarest one. If low sales were a problem, lots of bars would close every year. You find out soon enough, huh? Sorry? Oh, nothing. Don't mind me. Seems your guess was spot on, Gil. Huh? If it helps, I'm doing my best to appeal in your place. Really? Why? Most of Glitch City's bar are a pain in the, <laughs> are a pain in the ass. They constantly give reports of chemical damage or shady drinks. This is one of the few places from which I almost never receive complaints. Closest thing to a recent complaint was that whole Farmer Fabrics affair from a little while ago. So much saliva. Thought she was an alpaca and was spitting on everyone. Mm -hmm. I would get my hopes up, though. Especially since the BTC will try to save face by axing as many suspects as possible. Knowing you're making an effort is enough, though. Thanks. Can I get you anything else? Now you remember, the recipe book is a, a drink created here, right? Oh yeah, the suplex. Get me one of those, please. Sure. It's four, one, two, three, four. Two, three, one, two, three. All on the rocks it mixed. Here. The registry form said this was an accident while making a pile driver. You can ask the creator of the drink just over there. Ah, so you're Robert? Yes, that's my name. I'm Robert, the one and only. Jill called you Gil, though. Uh, it's Argentinian slang. Robert here is from Argentina, so we call him Gil. Huh, I see. Sorry, Brian, I was sorting some stuff at the office. Please come in. I'll be right there. Any other questions, Jill? No, not really. <coughs> Excuse me. Although, yeah. If you were to evaluate my performance right now, how would you rate me? Clean and timely deliverance, delivery of the correct order is a top-notch bartender. Thanks. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm surprised you haven't met him before. I received my training in another city. The regional supervisor there was some girl with a red mohawk. Ah, I see. I wonder what boss will talk to Brian about. Um, Jill, was it? Ah, Miss Stella, what a pressure. Pressure, pressure. Yeah, I'm gone. You love me, though. Yes, I do. I'm doing my best. At least I'm reading it for you. Mm -hmm. Are you okay? Yeah, um, just call me Stella and give me a big beer, please. Sure, on it. Are you sure you're fine? Um, you know, say, right? Of course, what's up with her? She was at the Apollo Trust Bank during the whole affair and. Yeah, she... pressure! Pressure! That's what we're talking about, is pressure. Oh. Right, that. So she. She didn't show up on the list of the massive body count in the aftermath, so I was hoping that maybe you've seen her. Much as I'd love to say that I had. Yeah, I figured as much. Man, the air is suddenly a lot heavier. Say as a white knight who was a healer. Helping people, so of course you go to some place like that. Mm -hmm. Oh well. Hey, I mean, I could tell her everything will be alright, but that would sound a bit condescending. What does one do in this kind of situation? Maybe a joke? Nah, no, that'd be tasteless. Okay, just try and say anything. At the very least, you'll break the tension. Maybe distracting her will be enough. I don't think clearly went under this kind of pressure, do I? Uh, there was a private eye here the other day. That was pretty. 
Look at Christmas ones next time. I would totally fund that. Anyways, I... Sorry, I'm a bit on edge. Private detective, I take it. Yeah, maybe one of his services? What's his name? I believe it was Art. Van. No, Von Dele... Oh, that Art guy. Yeah, actually, I hired him yesterday to look for Sam. So you still have hope. Somewhere between bargaining and depression right now. And I'm afraid to let go of bargaining. I see. Is he any good? He doesn't look like it, but he's quite skilled at gathering intel. I believe he'll give me answers about say, whatever they might be. <sighs> Sometimes I wish I had a magic wand so I could solve all my problems with the swing, you know? Sorry if I'm making you uncomfortable. Oh, sorry. No, that's not about feeling uncomfortable. It's just weird. I usually try to say something to my clients when I see them down. Right now, I can't find any words that don't sound hypocritical, useless, or tasteless. Glad to know you have that much common sense, at least. All I can do is get you drinks. Can I get you anything else? Something sweet. That'll help me calm down a bit. Gladly. Give her a piano woman. Makes me some pressure. Makes me think of mowage. The reason we are here today is mowage. <laughs> mowage is what brings us together today. Why I have you. You actually have the right quote where I misquoted <laughs> terribly. Come to her for quotes. I'm just awful at it. Honestly, I really am. I can butcher things to no end. Oh shit, no, no, no. Go away. Damn it. That's five. Yeah, that's five. That's two. Aged and mixed. Seems you really like say. I don't have brothers or sisters, and my social interactions are usually strictly business. So say's more than a friend to me. She's she's. Sorry, I brought that topic up at a bad time. <clears throat> don't worry about it. As I was saying, she's more than a friend. She's my emotional support. She's someone I can trust wholeheartedly. I'd say she's like my sister, but siblings usually lack the level of trust. No worries, Susan. I appreciate you showing up. Yeah, thank you for coming. We're probably not going to be much longer either anyway. No. <laughs> Get some rest. That's all I can say. <laughs> I'd say she's like my sister, but siblings usually like that level of trust. I have to deal with high-class pricks of every race and upbringing on a daily basis. They use a business mask to hide anything they don't want others to know, and I do the same. But with Say, I can be myself. I can do whatever I want and vent all my frustrations. She's always been there for me, and now she might need me. But here I am, sitting in a bar, making other people do that job because I'm a useless pile of flesh! <laughs> Sorry about that outburst. I'm actually kind of jealous of the level of self-control you're using here. I mean, I'd be a mess in that situation. So, would you like some fresh air? I'm going to take my break and you can use some. Well, for a given value of fresh. I'm fine, thanks. Okay, then. Gil, please service Miss Stella while I take my break. Sure, leave it to me. Well, if nothing, nothing else, we'll probably reach the Corgis tomorrow. We're on day seven. Not bad. Uh, so we have Art for Gilio again. God damn it. It is, is it chilly outside? <coughs> Bless you. I bet. Eh? 
What would a kid like you know about that, hey? It's giving you the facts as they are. What happened while I was gone? Let's see. Detective guy comes in. Cat Boomer girl greets him. They start talking. Everything was okay until the girl mentioned Zaibatsu Core offhand. After that, the guy got riled up and started badmouthing it. Oddly enough, he was the only one. She just carried on like it was a normal conversation. I see. Well, I won't deny that Batsu Core is anything but innocent. When you get down to it, it has enhanced the quality of life here. Yeah, if by enhanced you mean getting yanked around by a shiny new chain around our necks. Can't you see that those big companies don't care about us? Why do you think Glitch City is mockingly called the guinea pig of the world? We're just one big test group for them to use however they want. But then again, I don't expect a kid to understand how hard it was, let alone a rich kid. True, I don't know. And true, I I have a privilege that clouds my judgment. But can you deny that meddling of Zaibatsu Corps has brought quite a few benefits? Like what? The AI integration program they started is making huge advances in the AI department. AI department, sorry. Every day, more and more countries are seeing the benefits of recognizing AI as citizens. Yes, but we also hold the AI reformation program. Meaning that we're also the world's little prison. AI went rogue, transfer it to a delivery drone or ship it to Glitch City. That murderer is now delivering your pizza. Fair point. Although although that program has proven to have reformed many AIs. They don't brag about their 88% success rate for nothing. Um, City also has a stronger economy. Zabatsu Core's success has made more and more companies bring their products here. The gap between classes continues to grow. More companies just mean more people who will plant their feet on your face. But it also means more products are being brought to the lower classes. The stores have 20% more brand variety compared to last year. Uh, Zabatsu Core's main medical research branch has also made lots of discoveries. Our illnesses, previously thought incurable, are being addressed every day. Amazing for those who can afford them. Meanwhile, down here, we're experiencing medicine shortages almost every month. I have a point there. Oh, but there are also more jobs. All the companies coming down here need personnel. So the unemployment rate has gone down by almost 40% this year. More jobs? Shut up. Am I wrong? Well, that's... Hey, you, don't just sit there. Give me a Zen star. Sure. Make a Zen star for the Zor Sore Baby. Here. God, this is awful. It's your order, though. I seriously hope you don't really believe everything you just said. Of course I do. Why else would I say it? You do bring up something I always fail to remember. All the benefits we gained over time are limited to a few. I can talk about advances all I want, but in the end, they're still a luxury belonging only to a few. And even those that can be accessed eat by everyone are more, more like an improvement in the bigger picture. It doesn't take away the fact that there have been positive changes. Credit where credit's due, don't you think? That's a pretty mature answer. Discussions are a way for two parties to understand each other. The only, the only people afraid of discussion are the ones whose points are too fragile to defend against someone. Not gonna get into it. Yeah, mature whatever. I'm gonna take the chance to ask you about that job I gave you yesterday. I haven't been able to find much, but I can at least tell you that she wasn't at the bank when it opened up. What does that mean? Either she left before the whole ordeal started, or she managed to escape at some point before the whole, the, the whole thing ended. All the corpses are accounted for. They only found one totally disfigured, but witnesses identified it. It wasn't your friend, that much is for sure. I see. Did you call him here? No, he just so happened to come by here today. Weird part is that the, is that the girl did enter the bank. It's just it's like she vanished or something. Is that your husband? We're talking about say. Huh? Is that your last one? Yes. Okay. I 
see. Thanks. Keep it up. Your face brightened a bit. Hope is the last thing you lose, I guess. If he's telling the truth, same might have found a way out. <sighs> so you're a resourceful girl. Ah, resourceful girl. She surely did something. I think I'll have another drink. Do you want anything? Me, um, just give me whatever you order. Two bad touches, please. <laughs> On it. Remember this one party I went to. That guy that came up with the name of this drink showed up. After people found that one out, they lined up to slap him for whatever reason. It seemed offended to me, though. Imagine a guy shows up and tells you, I made a classy black bad touch. Wouldn't you line up to slap him? You okay, Jill? I'm fine. <laughs> Now that I think of it, did you find that girl you were looking for a week ago, Mr. Vondelay? Turns out she was at the Paul Trust Bank at all this time. No wonder I couldn't get in touch with her. Girl? Uh oh. Oh, that's cool. Someone paid me to look for Crimson Rose and she happened to be at the... Um... What? I'm trying to avoid mentioning that a dangerous assassin got stuck in the same bank as the girl you're looking for. Oh, don't worry. Besides, the last thing I'm worried about with Say is people. Why is that? Her attitude is usually so laid back and gentle that she has no problem getting people on her side. And on the off chance that she has to defend herself well, I once saw her take care of a warbot gun hangwire by herself. She did need medical help afterwards, but she recovered in no time and managed to take care of the bot. Is she really that good? She's not only really physically fit, she's also really good with Krav Maga and... Something wrong? No, nothing. I just realized I forgot about all that. Say is not invincible, but she knows how to take care of herself. Like I said, she's resourceful. She surely found a way out. I just hope she's well wherever the hell she is. She owes me an ice cream. <laughs> Want another drink, Mr. Vondelay? It's me. It's on me. Are you sure? Yeah, order away. Okay, then. I'll have a piano man. You, Miss Stella? I'm fine. Get his order. One piano man for the detective. I'd be the most boring bartender. I wouldn't be doing anything. I'd be like, one, two, three, done. Here's your drink. Does it taste good? <clears throat> yeah. Ah, so this is what drinking something classy without worrying about the price feels like. All right, I should get going. My contact will arrive at the rendezvous point soon. Let you know if I find out anything else, Miss Ho Miss Hoshi. Please do. Right then. You've been very, you've been generous today. He made my night with his discoveries on Say's situation. Not totally over it, but at least I got distracted for a bit. Well, that's it for me. Good night, Miss Hoshi. Thanks again. Please come again. Don't mind if I stay a bit longer, right? Why would I? It's not like you're asleep. I think this place is soothing. Let's go sit over there near the arcades. Alright, then that will be all, Diane. Dana. Quite a mess, the situation with, um... Robert. Oh, no. 
Brian, you have a meeting in an hour with MI6 Hall C. Right, right. Oh, if it isn't Miss Hoshi herself. Ah, Brian, fancy meeting you here. I expect to see you here of all places. Are you busy? Mind catching up for a bit? Sure, no problem. Yo, we'll be sitting over here. Let me know if you need anything. Do. Um, this holophone is an old model, so hanging up is a bit laggy. You can call me Cass, by the way. I I'm Jill. Say, you guys give a lot of liberties to my boss. I mean, she gets away with too much stuff. She's not hurting anyone, and wouldn't you say it's more interesting than what... Finally. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you talk about your boss like that? Stop it. Phew, it's been quite the long day. At least the streets are calm today. I have <gasps> arrived yet again at... <coughs> oh god, the Majestic Hall of Heroes. <laughs> calm until now. We meet again, bartender. <laughs> you look winded for... For... Gio? Gio? Sure, we'll go with that. For Gio. Ilium. Really? Mm -hmm. Look, winded. For Gilio. Gilio, yeah, it's for Gilio. It's pronounced Verhirio. Irio. Because he's so fucking special. No, I'm pretty sure it's for Gilio. He said as much the last time he came. Renunciations are a silly thing society imposes on letters. They want to be free. They want to be pronounced however they want. You look winded. We're all a little toys winded by the cruel hand of fate. Just stumbling until it decides not to wind us anymore. It, you're the only one in the vicinity hyperanalyzing. That's, um, I was jogging. Just like what? I can jog however I want. Yes, you can. What can I get you? Something fake. Of course. Oh, yeah. Fair enough. Here. And this is totally not beer. Ah, yes, just as fake as I want. Say, Virgilio, where do you work? I take the noble duties of curator at the Steampunk Museum. I square. Really, what do you do? I study everything that comes and keep it clean. Comes and keep it clean for the people that visit the premises. But lately, my duties have been hindered by the museum's owner. Really? Yeah, he told me, stop touching the exhibits. You're going to break them. The nerve of some people. Me, 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 me. Still fails to realize that I'm the curator. That'd be all those machines would be rustier than they already are. Even the visitors get that I'm the one responsible for those. Why can't the owner realize that too? Yeah. Bet he treats you like a janitor or something like that. Exactly! Okay then, time for your next challenge, bartender. Challenge, he says. I want purity. Call for a Zen star. How's this? Pure. The drink. It's free from any, <laughs> any human sin. It can do no harm consciously. Ah, yes. Beautiful. <sighs> huh? Hey, you. The guy over there. Me? Yes, you. Have we met before? Can't remember. Maybe? Yeah, I think. No, 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 no. <coughs> we haven't met ever at all. An interesting reaction. Ah, Jill, I'll be taking my leave now. Be careful out there. Thanks, huh? Excuse me, have we met somewhere before? 
That face, that eye. What about my eye, punk? We haven't met ever at all. Never, ever, 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 ever. Good talking to you, bartender. Um, did you just scare off a client? Apparently. Well, I'm off. Thanks for everything. Don't mention it. Are we done for the day? Yep, quite a few clients considering the whole situation. Oh shit, that Virgilio guy. So you two actually met before? Yeah, you can say that. What? What? Gil stuff. Don't mind it. What were you talking about to Brian? Well, we are mostly catching up, to be honest. I hadn't seen him in a while. I offered him a drink when we met last week. Talked a bit about what to do after the bar closes. Oh, and I tried to uh, explain the situation with uh, Robert here. He agreed to help me out with that one when the time comes. Ah. Oh. I was also tuning up the details for the new employee. New employee? A part-timer. You'll meet him tomorrow. Play? Corgi. Oh. Oh. Him? So it's a guy? An adorable guy, if I do say so myself. I suddenly have deja vu. Are you alright, Jill? <laughs> yeah. Must be nothing. Feels a bit tense. Buying a shoulder massager will. Just... Uh, I'm just gonna save. We are calling it. I should. Oh yeah, definitely. Ten o'clock. I have to work tomorrow. Done. I should have bought a six pack. I thought you did. I. <sighs> oh. But it was seven ninety nine. <laughs> but I'm not totally trashed. So at least there's that. Anyways, we're gonna call it a night. We're probably streaming tomorrow. Yep. We're, yep. We're getting pretty far. Are you ready to start day to eight? Think the less. Oh, there's a lot of days. Yeah. Dude, if we get you to ride with me all the way through the end, this will be the first time I actually succeed in this game. Oh. Yeah. Well. Let me use a guide. Yeah. Oh, I've overcharged, overcharged people for beers, drinks, all. Oh. <laughs> Who would want that? It has four, too. But anyways, so call it a night. Yep, alright, we are going to call it a night. Alright. You all have a good night. Have a good night, guys. We'll see you tomorrow, probably. Got louder. But anyways, peace.